it's hard to find something where you're like i hate this game like, right if you hate this game i feel like you a hater like straight <laughs> up like you're like i don't see what how you cannot see how amazing this game is what's going on guys we are back here today and my goodness street fighter 6 is literally here and we have justin wong here what's well, good how are you doing you know i'm glad to be here and obviously always talking about street fighter 6 is always a fun thing and I, I'm, I'm jealous i'm jealous that all these review copies out there all these youtube reviews six i feel like it's coming out strong you know what i mean coming like out very strong very strong like i feel like like top, like, like top tier like sss gotcha yeah type of yeah type of yeah thing. you know like it is mind-blowing you know what i mean like we don't buy games that is a full package anymore we we're kind of okay with like buying games yeah that is we like, are yeah you know like that is a decent package and things like that so i really like that capcom is setting that bar high again i'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to what they bring outside of the launch you know like we, we don't even know what they have for next year yeah we we do all we need to we have like the dlc characters being announced um you know like rashid ed aki and akuma uh, but those are like long periods like you know like a cool you like we're not gonna see akuma until 2024 he looks really cool he looks he just looks like shinakuma just from like the artwork alone i wanted to ask you when you were when you heard about street fighter 6 and they talked about like the overdrive mechanic and things like that like when you heard it before you played it but just reading it and seeing how it worked were you a bit concerned how like the game was going to be played uh no i don't i never am concerned about like capcom games because like the one thing capcom likes to do when it comes to making a new street fighter or new game in general they want to really try to throw out legacy skill um, so it's kind of just been there since like the beginning of time. If you look at Street Fighter 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 and now 6, there's never really been like kind of like a legacy skill will carry over to kind of carry you to, to the next thing. It's like pretty much learning a brand new game at a clean slate. So for me, because I've been playing Capcom games for like ever and knowing that's like what they like to do to me, I'm just like, yeah, it's going to just be a brand new game, clean slate. Because when you play Street Fighter 2, it's really about just spamming special moves like Fireball, Shoryuken, so stuff like that, right? And then you play Street Fighter 3, it's like, okay, it's more aggressive with parries and everything. And then Street Fighter 4 has like a whole FADC system. And Street Fighter 5 is a V-Trigger system. And obviously, look, now we're here at Street Fighter 6 with, with a drive mechanic system. So it's, just, it's always been like that in Capcom games compared to like Tekken and King of Fighters where like, legacy skills super carries over the one thing is that we there are players uh from like previous capcom games that will always like hate on a game like street fighter 2 players hate street fighter 3 street fighter 3 players hate street fighter 4 street fighter 4 players hate street fighter 5 I'm not sure if street fighter 5 players will hate street fighter 6 I actually street fighter 6 it. looks yeah looks so amazing yeah but maybe we'll see after the first month like people be like yo i'm about to install street fighter 5 or something Dude, on twitter yeah, i don't know bro, bro. Yeah, uh, dude, I think that'd be crazy just because of like, you know, you know, it'd be crazy that six actually broke the curse. You know what I mean? I'd be like, it'll wow. be godlike. It'll be it'll be godlike because I mean, there's one thing that people hate spending so much time learning and mastering a game and then having to just throw that out the window and starting over. That's why like other games, you have a lot of like old school players always continuing playing the newer versions of the game because they are already good. Like, like if a new King of Fire 16 comes out, the same players that were good in King of Fire 15, 14, 13, and so forth, they're already good. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing for like Tech and 8. Like, you already know that Arsenal, Ash, Nii, they're already top eight at the first tournament, making winners finals at the first tournament because they already have that legacy skill, right? But for Street Fighter, you have all these players that come that were like top players from like four or five or whatever. And when they play the new game, bro, they might not make top eight the first time around because it's different. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's really, really different. Like the first Street Fighter uh, 5 major, Sonic Fox made top eight yeah. in the final uh, round, yeah. right? Brent is cool, Sonic Fox. I, For me, when I first heard about it, you know, I was always a bit concerned because you know, uh, coming from like uh, like Guilty Gear Strive, for example, like um, when they when they brought their game out, like you know, I was okay with the changes and things like that, and I'm always yeah. okay with changes. I just think like uh, like you know the way that they wanted to try to uh, attract new players was always something that always felt very like a chore when you keep playing a game for a long time periods of time. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, just because of the damage. But what I like is that Arx is doing now. They're finally toning down the damage a little bit. And they're trying to find little ways to tone it down while also kind of, like, keep it, you know, a little bit high. Because, you know, Guilty Gear is a high damage game as a whole. Like, But I do like that Capcom is, like, you know, you know, damage is not crazy. But, like, if you get a counter hit or you get, like, a punish counter or you spend, like, level three, then, yeah. you know, you get rewarded for, like, those... Like those stray hits and like like and I, I sure. kind of like that you know what I mean and uh one of, one of the things I uh really really was scared about was the overdrive system I was like oh that's like that's like your ex I was thinking like yo that's your ex that's your super that's your this but then when I play it I was like oh it makes sense you know parry I was a bit cons- concerned about parry too but they people don't know, like parries yeah yeah you know I I I, I don't like parry you know but I am okay with parry now you know like I I feel like it's okay right now. Definitely later on, it could probably be probably the best mechanic ever, but we don't know. Um, yeah. But I, I like the aesthetic of it, you know, like the slowdown and like the characters talking. Shit. Like you know, when Ryu, when Ryu Perry, he's like simple. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think that's they, cool. They right? add a lot of charm. There's yeah, a lot of charm yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. In that, I'm just more scared of kind of like hopefully they keep the the servers great enough to keep playing online because I I feel like Guilty Gear Strive like had the same thing where at the gate like it was amazing the online was so good that eventually it just kind of like started doing like bad right you got the hacker man yeah, yeah. right yeah it just deteriorated so i'm just hoping that Street Fighter 6 doesn't fall in that same category where like there seems there's like a Street Fighter 6 hacker man or like the online just started getting like becoming worse right so i'm just hoping that does not happen for 6. uh so another question i have is Man, how did you feel about companies like giving this game like a nine, like out of ten? Like, did you really expect for them to just like be like, yo, this game is like a masterpiece? Like, did you really expect that and like give it like super high rating? Because I feel like fighting games, like outside of some games, I feel like it don't get like super, super high like that, right? It seems like Capcom is probably the only one that kind of fighting game wise kind of get like those super high reviews nah not even that like the reason why i'm so surprised about that score is because like monster hunter is such an amazing title from capcom like monster hunter is always high ranking high reviews yeah the fact that street fighter 6 score is higher than monster hunter it's crazy i i think that's the insane part to me uh so it just means that like man like this must must be like a master game. I think it's because all these reviewers are like obviously like they're more old school. They're more they're fans. They know the Capcom universe, the the fan base, the story, the lore. And when you when you play it, it's like there's so much lore. Like and the crazy part is Street Fighter Five is the the first time they ever had a story mode, like a legit story mode. Street Fighter Six world tour it seems like everyone loves it the fact that it's like an open world rpg kind of like semi-world open rpg and like yakuza and they ha- and it follows like a yakuza style type of type of game where you could just fight people on the street level up level up your skills uh learn more moves from like masters and do these type of quests like there's so much like effort in there right and like and i can see the game being like a a 40 plus hour game just world tour alone right because there's so like just playing chapter one and chapter two you 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 just appreciate the stuff that you can see in world tour mode because there's so much references and if you're a person that plays street fighter since the beginning of time you want to see all these type of references like when you're when you're in Times square you see all like these characters doing like kind of like different type of like advertisements like manon show like doing perfume abigail has his own tire shop like like a lot of stuff right and then there's like a section where it's really cool like you get to see like specific like stages you can be like oh i think this stage is from like this this game like street fighter 3 or second impact like that's like i I recognize the stage and i'm like bro they brought the stage back so i'm hoping i get to see a lot more references like that when playing more of the world tour modes like chapter three and so forth and so forth literally we have two games for the price of one that's how i look at it so that's why i think like the score is so high because there's so much stuff to do instead of just playing online and everything you if you are a person that are scared of playing online because you're like oh i don't want to lose 50 times in a row if you're not a pro street fighter player or, or competent in street fighter games Bro, you could just play offline like the whole entire time yeah, and yeah. still have a blast, right? So yeah. 
it's hard to find something where you're like i hate this game like, right if you hate this game i feel like you a hater like straight <laughs> up like you're like i don't see what how you cannot see how amazing this game is you know what i mean like it's just really hard to find a way to be like this game sucks like it's really hard like if you if you if you don't like the the, the the online bro don't play online play world tour mode you know just do do a bunch of other cool stuff i always ask myself like when somebody make, when a company makes a great product like this what's next you know what i mean like how can you <laughs> top how can you top this you know what i mean and like to top this is like wow what else that can be possibly add on to like the next generation because you know i i'm assuming it what all the stuff that they put and all the people praising this game hard this is not going it's not going to be the last chapter you know what i mean like yeah. it's, it's going to be more so i'm always curious like what's the next thing that they're going to do so obviously you have to have world tour mode moving forward yes right you cannot yeah it's a staple now like, you cannot not have world tour mode or like all these other type of like single player content like well, like you cannot take them out like they have to stay for the rest of time yes it's impo it's impossible and i feel like other fighting games are gonna have to have a world tour mode too yeah i mean mortal kombat already kind of does that yeah. so that's like tekken yeah you know, tekken tekken Splinter tekken already Gear, has a kind of like story mode melty blood you know all, all those games are gonna have a world tour mode you gotta create your avatar in the melty blood universe go around you know and go 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 fight broa you know what i mean things like that mortal kombat is probably like the only one with a, with a with a story mode that can rival uh street fighter uh street fighter 6 and not uh, in mortal kombat 1 is going to come out like a few months anyway so we yeah, get to see that I'm surprised about that it was crazy now i'm, I'm sure everybody's going to want to know who are you main who am i maining yeah um you know so, i know i know you like the i know you like the lame stuff like are you are you bringing back od lame justin or are we gonna bring are we gonna have casual justin which one are we bringing this year I feel like there's not much lame characters in the game. Like you have Guile, he's probably like the best lame character in Dalsum. But it's just like even then, like Guile doesn't even seem like like completely lame. He has like these crazy combos and everything like that. And then Dalsum, I mean, if you look at Mystery Fire Five, he just became he was he became one of the best rushdown characters in the game. <laughs> Yoga so, <Gale>. like, <laughs> right? So so it's like yeah, Yoga Ham, pretty Yoga Ham, right? Yeah, so Yoga it's Ham, just, bro. like it's hard to kind of tell from those uh situations if there are like going to be defensive characters because defense i think the defensive play style is has like been deteriorating like l there's less characters that are adopting that play style because i think developers know that casual players don't want to see that like mm. straight up guile dalsim those characters they are like casual killers so they are the characters that will make you uninstall the game if you are a casual player yeah right so they're going to remove stuff like that and like if you look at Street Fighter 6 um it seems like command grabs are are the wave very yeah, popular yeah, yeah. right very, super very, popular very exciting very exciting big yeah. damage and Surprising, everything so yeah. you know it, it might be the command grab error for the for season one the one thing is like when people ask like who who you want to main that's the hardest question for Street Fighter 6 and the reason why I say that is because when I ask this to other people everyone names two to three characters like you you don't name one character like oh i'm gonna main this character right um before the game launches is you like oh i think i'm like I'm, I'm, I'm interested in these two three characters and blah 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 three characters i definitely want to play uh just from looking at all the footage and everything is uh cami um jp and manon right those three are like the, the top three on my list that i'm like really interested in in playing in playing i definitely feel like the the beta open beta characters plays a completely different game to like some of the new characters that we've been seeing like from clip to clip or you know like people yeah. like people's thoughts and impressions on like you know some of the characters like it really feel like a lot of other characters that we don't have in open beta like literally plays a if like it just looks like they just play a whole like different game like blanca with the blanca chans yeah. you know what i mean like zangief with like half screen spd range and you know like <laughs> crazy stuff like that like you know you look at like you look at for example like jamie's command grab and then you look at like the grappler's command throw they're like night and day you know what i mean like it is night and day yeah it's but, night and yeah. day yeah, but we we didn't really have a grappler in in the open beta. Like there was yeah. no grappler. Jamie was the only one that had a command grab. Even then, he's like, 
He's not a grappler. It's like it's like you're saying like Yun and Yang is a grappler. He just has a command grab. Right? Yeah. So, but like, yeah, definitely the the characters like Manon, Lily, the characters that really have command grabs, like Manon, Lily, and Zangief. Yeah, I mean they they definitely look amazing. They look very strong with how much damage their command grab does. For my characters, uh, I'm looking at DJ. Uh, DJ actually looks super cool. Like it, I, like from what I've seen, he doesn't even look like a charge character. Like I, I just like it, you forget that he's he's not a char uh, he's a charge character because of all like this move the sways and stuff like that and him like you know dashing in like he, he seems like like again like a charge character that is always moving forward you know what I mean like yeah 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 it, it's yeah, yeah. pretty it's pretty crazy uh, he's definitely a, a hybrid now yeah for sure he's yeah. kind of like Chun Li hybrid yeah and um that's really cool so um those that's a character I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm not, I'm also looking forward to seeing like how Marissa plays. Like, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm definitely gonna main her, but I just want to see like how she plays because I actually think she's look, she looks super cool aesthetically. I like the move that like you know she charges. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, the charge punches. Yeah, the yeah. charge punches and things like that. I want to see how that works out in in the mid range. Uh, I I'm just super excited to also uh, give out. Uh, this is this is actually like surprising, but I actually think Blanca actually looks pretty cool in this game. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You know, low key, I, I, low key, I, I, low key. I, low I, key. I don't like how Blanca looks personally. Straight up, I, I don't like his outfit, but like gameplay. His you game... ever watched the? You ever watch the Powerpuff Girls? Uh, you know, I know exactly who you' talking about. Bro, he looked like yeah, fuzzy, fuzzy yeah, Lumpkins, bro. Lump... <laughs> fuzzy Lumpkins. Bro. Yeah, bro. With the overalls. <laughs> yeah, with the. <laughs> Uh, bro, I'm not playing a character with overall. Come on, overalls, come on, bro, bro. Mr. Lumpkins, dog. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's a good tag. That's a good tag. Anybody who got <laughs> that tag, take that, bro. We already know that Rasheed is coming soon. How good do you think he's gonna be? Oh, you know, I've seen literally like everyone on Twitter is convinced that he's gonna be broken based on like 10 seconds of footage. I don't want to agree with that, but at the same time. He kind of feels like one of those designs that always ends up being good, don't you think? Yup. What is going on, guys? We are back here at Fighting Game Select, and I got Mr. J.M. Croffington. I wanted to talk about something that you brought up that I thought was really interesting. You made a thread about Street Fighter VI doing a lot of things when it comes to online experience, so I feel mm -hmm. bad complaining about anything, but as it stands, there are <laughs> the issues that stick out to me otherwise solid experience so let's talk about the good man what is your favorite aspect of street fighter 6 if we're talking about the online i mean the net code is pretty crazy right yes. i i feel like it's it's up there in the in the hollowed halls of like fighting games with really amazing net code you know like killer instinct yeah all girls that kind of thing like it doesn't it, it doesn't feel any worse than those games i would say so i've, I've been playing people from europe from california wherever and uh, it just works which is pretty awesome as long as they're not on mcdonald's wi-fi <laughs> so basically in the hall of fame you know you got lebron james you got <laughs> michael jordan you got killer instinct and you got street fighter six so yeah telling me, you're telling me they all gonna be there together with the jerseys you know what i mean what, what? i don't know i don't know if i'm ready to put it on mount rushmore but yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good, man. I think uh, from what we've been experiencing for the past, what, eight years, I think this is a, a pretty solid foundation to start with. Now, there's mm -hmm. another thing I wanted to talk about a little bit on your list, too. You know, you was talking about okay. the biggest problem is still matchmaking criteria. It seems only match up when people from small, physical area around you, which I think, in my opinion, is actually insane for how amazing their netco is. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, seeing that... And um, I really like that you said it's okay to let us play. I, I really like that a lot. I think that's such a strong statement. For me, I, I don't think it's as bad for me as it is for some people because, you know, I live in a major city, so there's, like, so many people around to match me with. But it definitely does happen where it's, like, yeah, especially as I'm getting to the higher ranks, you know, and, like, upper diamond and stuff. It's like, man, I've played this guy four or five times today. We're just trading points back and forth. So, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. My, my theory is – or my, my – my belief here is that basically Capcom designed this with the idea that, you know, the average player is probably going to play, you know, a dozen matches or something like the average player is not like sitting there and grinding out a thousand matches like you and I are. So they they want to create a smooth experience that for 99 percent of players, they can log in and they can play some online matches and they'll have a good experience. But for for that small percent like us, you know, I think we'd be more willing 
to put up with like okay it keeps matching me up with this guy with with two bars and i have to reject it but like i'm willing to put up with that in exchange for you know getting a wider variety so i feel like they they might have gone a little too far in the direction of uh optimizing for the average player and i i think they could keep it like it is but add an option just add an option in in settings where it's like okay my my matchmaking radius you know is it is it like same small area same region same country whatever like j just give us the option i think would be nice so yeah i would say that's probably my biggest problem with the game is is uh is the matchmaking issues with getting matched up with the same people like it, and to think like if that's the biggest problem with the game that's pretty good because the good. matches are still good yeah it still plays great it's just yeah i'm tired of seeing the same people yeah you know so it's funny that you say that is because um I, I feel like what they should add in Capcom, you should hire me if, I, if I'm making something <laughs> really crazy. Is they should add like a online world tour move where like you actually mm. you actually play like in a worldwide audience like tournament where like you know it's like rank match, it's like matchmaking, but it's like a different tier of like matchmaking where you know uh, when you are climbing your ranks, it actually is like like true 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 skill uh, true skill matchmaking or something like that. Mm -hmm. Where it's like a separate thing, so people who want to be able to like play people all over the world and like you know challenge yourself, I think they should do something like that if they want to keep it safe. And I think that's an easier way to kind of like add that option just for players like us, right? Another one of my tweets in in this epic chain of a uh, of a rant that I went on was that uh, yeah, I feel like there's not that much to do in in ranked if you if you're a good player. I think like you'll probably get placed into diamond if you're like a good player and then you know you can grind to master and then it's like well what else is there you know so uh i i feel like whether it's adding more ranks or like yeah like you said maybe like a different mode that has a separate ranking or whatever like some kind of thing to like give us something to do that's not just uh, you know player placements grind to master and that's it i think that would be nice yeah and i and i i personally wouldn't want them to just be like adding like grandmaster because i think it'd just be easier because it would like diamond master right. grandmaster right and I, and i think uh what i think i would like for them to do is again add that new mode and make something where it's then you keep climbing but then like as you um like you know how if you play uh like for example like old anime games where you have like rank colors uh, like, mm -hmm. like, like, yeah, like pink, the, the pink, 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 yellow yeah. stuff. So my logic is, if they make like a, a like a turn it online mode where like you get like based off your colors, so you only mm -hmm. play against those colors and you can get to like the highest color and like you get like cool cosmetics and things like that. Like you get like skins for your avatar or you get like you know nice um like tags or like nice titles and things like that. Something that I encourage you to play. And if you if you stick with that, then you get like fight money and things like that and like or, or fighting fight credits, whatever whatever they call it. Right. Them. All um, right, yeah. I, I have a pitch for Capcom. Okay. Here's here's my pitch okay. is I think that they should do online events where uh, the the example that kind of made me think of this was magic the gathering online <laughs> they in mtgo they have these things where you can do you can do uh like basically like a mini tournament you do three matches and if you go three for three they call that they call that like meddling like you got a medal and so they can also do events where it's like okay for for this event there's like a unique medal if you go three for three in, in this event, you know? And so then people can look at your profile and be like, oh, like he has this medal that was only there for one event two years ago, stuff like that. So I think they should do some kind of thing where, yeah, like you you basically are, are like signing up for like a, a set thing, whether it's a bracket or a set number of matches or whatever, and then have some kind of like in-game reward or even just like a cosmetic that you you know, you get based on your results. And then, yeah, they can keep it interesting by being like, all right, now Rashid just came out. So now if you, you know, go far in this event, you'll get a Rashid medal or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think something like that would be cool, too, because then, you know, like you're going to be fighting the really good players. If you are the type of person that, you know, you want that that ultra high level, high rank. Yeah, 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 that that adrenaline rush. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I definitely would like that. Uh, my yeah. question is to you, do you really like the placement like like? the actual system placement as as a whole like do you think that that should be something but do you feel like this concept is really good and it prevents people from like you know trying to like you know smurf and things like that like yeah do you prefer do you prefer this for all like uh fighting games 
I, I think I do like the placements, but I might just like it because it makes really good content. You know, I'm a little bit biased. Like, it, it it's such an easy video to just do your placement matches with a character and see what happens. It's so much fun. Yeah. But I, I think it makes sense conceptually, right? Like, if they just say, okay, we're just going to start you at, at bronze and you got to work up to master, like, especially since it's per character, you know, like, do you really want to smurf your way through bronze you know get you just like beat everybody you know until you get up to your your true rank so yeah i i think i i like the idea but yeah the implementation is a little bit weird to me because like on day one i i think i got like placed gold with ryu and then i got placed diamond with man all even though i had like similar results like in terms of the 10 matches so i i don't know it just feels a little bit random i feel like there's there's like a hidden elo or like a hidden matchmaking ranking that they use to determine your rank because I think they tend to they match you up in your placement matches against people who are around the level the game thinks you are. So there's something there. Do you think the reason why it's like that is because of the locked in, like the region locked matchmaking? Do you feel like because it's more random, it's because of those, like how the system is? Do you think it would be a little bit more consistent if it was more broad, like broad, broader? Yeah, that's a good question. I haven't thought about that. You know, I could definitely see like, it, yeah, if it's, if it's broader, they can find someone who is like closer to your rank, right? You know, whereas, if it's only searching in a small area, you know, they might have to get someone who's a little too good or a little too weak just to find someone who matches. So that could have something to do with that. I, I don't know. I, I, I think in general, I would maybe like a little more transparency about how the placement works. Because I also know there's that like questionnaire at the start of the game where they're like, what level do you think you are? <laughs> and I'm like, how big of an impact does that make? What does that actually change? It's a little bit unclear. Now that we got all of the things out of the way, what is there one big thing that you will want Capcom to do with the jukebox because that's another um, thing I want to talk about is you know I feel like we got gaslighted a little bit you know I, we you know, did we got a little bit debated <laughs> yeah we got debated because when I heard of the juke I'm like oh we're gonna be you know playing our favorite gal thing while we fighting and stuff and you know the only time you play the gal thing is when you you know walking in the uh walking in the uh battle hub and uh I was a bit disappointed yeah. by that yeah, it, it is a bummer. And, you know, I'm one of the rare SF6 soundtrack defenders. I think I'm a defender, SF6 too. soundtrack is pretty good. Same. But I am getting tired of it. <laughs> oh, damn. I've heard I've heard the same song so many times. I'm, I'm ready to hear some other stuff, I think. You know? Yeah, that's fair. I think I think the variety is always good. That's one thing I liked about SNK. They were never mm. shy about their jukebox. They were like, yo, you want to yeah. add all your song? But we got Samurai Showdown. We got... Mm -hmm. Garu remix, you know what I mean, like all this kind of stuff. I think that is really cool. Uh, but yeah, man, I really, I was a little disappointed, man. Like, yeah. you know, I was really, really sad about it, and I really hope that Capcom actually takes the time and like, you know, give us something a little bit more nice than just walking around cabinets and uh, yeah. Listening to these so, things. Guilty Gear Strive, their their jukebox is like bare minimum, I think, which is like you at the, you know, when you're selecting your character, you select the song. Which is a little bit weird because like you can select random and then it's like every song that you have unlocked in the whole game. So you might get like a super not fitting song. Uh, and you know, you have to like manually pick the song. Whereas I really liked what they did in Tekken 7 where you you could literally say like, okay, on this stage, play this song. Yep. On this stage, play this song. On this stage, play this song. Which I thought was so sick because sometimes I would even get so granular where I'm like, okay, like I... I hate this stage's song, so I'm just gonna replace it with like some other song I like, or like, I love this stage's song, so I'm gonna apply it to multiple stages so I can hear it more. Yeah. So that was so sick. And I think that didn't even exist on the PC version too. It was like console only yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was actually hilarious. We already know that Rasheed is coming soon. Um, how good do you think he's gonna be? Oh, you know, I've seen literally like everyone on Twitter is convinced that he's going to be broken based on like 10 seconds of footage. I don't want to agree with that, but at the same time, he kind of feels like one of those designs that always ends up being good. Don't you think? I feel like the yep. characters that always end up being bad are like, you know, like grapplers are always bad and like pure like projectile zoners i feel like tend to be bad in street fighter as well i'm sure there's exceptions that i ryu now <laughs> ryu now yeah exactly ryu has been consistently bad for a very long time 
Yeah, and the characters that tend to be good in my experience are like the really agile, like mix-up heavy characters. You know, like Cami is good a lot and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, he seems. And that, and another thing in this game is that there's not that much mix in this game outside of throw. Throw is like 99% of your mix in this game. So if he has like actual like super tricky cross-ups and stuff like that, yeah, he could he could be he could be really insane. So. You know, obviously, I'm always the guy who's saying, let's wait and see. Let's not get too carried away. But, yeah, it seems he seems like he's... Plus, they got to sell the season pass, right? So, surely, they'll, they'll over-tune him so people buy the character, right? Surely. Yeah, yeah surely. And I just seeing, like, his win mechanic, uh, his win, like, his win mechanic as a whole, it's yeah. actually insane. Like, the fact that he can do EXs and follow up and, like, use follow-ups afterwards. It's going to be pretty mm. crazy. You know, his V-Trigger 1 is level 2 super now. So, like, that's crazy right. as well. So, like... Yeah, he, all, all the level 2 supers that are installs, I think, are really good. Yes. Uh, very strong, you know. So, uh, that just means his is going to be <laughs> just as good. So... Hey, and the, the last the last game that had a, a Tornado character, you know, throwing tornadoes oh around, that really scarred me for life. Yeah, oh, yeah, Master. Well, Swift Master Pro. That, that, that left an impression. So, yeah, dude, maybe the, the power of the wind is, is too much. Dude, when I went to the off, uh, Arxis office to try the game out and, like, I streamed it over there, bro, when I grabbed, when I tapped Swift Master, I said, this character <laughs> is so broken. Like, I just, he dude, moves like the wind, man. He's, he's, he's so fast. Yeah, bro, ridiculous. Any character like that just... The Magneto in the game is crazy, but yeah. <laughs> do you think MK1 right now is pushing himself for being the hardest, or do you think Street Fighter 6 is pushing himself as like being like the top dog? I'm known more of a you know, like a Capcom, Capcom guy, Capcom fanboy. 100%, I agree, I'm a Capcom fanboy. But what's going on, Fighting Game Select? We are back today. I am here with Casual Tryhard himself, Justin Wong. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always great to like chat up a few, talk talk some fighting game stuff. Yeah. Like, uh, you tell me you had like some interesting topics to talk about. Yeah, man. Around. Back in a era where it used to be like the top three dogs, you know, it used to be Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Marvel. Now. We have two of the big dogs that are available right now. We have to do the, which one's the best, right? What would you say is the huge, big difference takeaway from Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 6? One of them is like, obviously Mortal Kombat is famous for the block button. And Street Fighter is famous using uh, the joystick or thumb pad or whatever directionals that you want to use and you hold back or down back to block, right? Mortal Kombat is known for more like dial combo while Street Fighter is kind of known for like kind of like linking your combos right like chains and links so that's like a huge difference as well the biggest difference is probably the fireballs they don't clash in mortal kombat they just go through so both of you both characters get hit compared to street fighter where if you throw a hadouken or a sonic boom they clash and just nullify each other completely no matter what these are two games that are fighting games in the same essence but in terms of like the differences they're just completely polar opposites Mortal Kombat is not afraid to kill off a character and bring back the character in a different type of vibe. Uh, while Street Fighter, I mean, I think what, Street Fighter 6, this is the kind of the first time we're like, oh, is Bison really, really, really dead? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Charlie died, but my man came back in Street Fighter 5, you know, as, as a as a Frankenstein type of thing. Um, so I guess we'll see if Bison's really dead. Yeah, I feel like a character like Bison is so strong in the Street Fighter series that killing him off, I feel like you have to find like an amazing like substitute character. I think JP kind of does that a little bit. Capcom definitely made sure that if we're replacing Bison, we have to make sure that like he he leaves a big impact in um in in the current like scene or you know he's definitely doing a great job filling Bison's shoes, right? How do you think the franchise are doing uh, independently? I think they're both doing great. Like fighting game is uh is on the rise, right? So I, Street Fighter Six they like I think announced like after month one or month two that they sold over a million or two million copies. Month, I forgot month, which month one. one. Month one, right? They they sold over like pretty much a million, and that was already a huge success. And you could you could tell that there's so much love in the game. It's like an apology letter from making Street Fighter Five and everybody having a bad taste. And I think Mortal Kombat is also doing good, but obviously I would say Mortal Kombat One has a little bit more bugs, like little quality of life bugs that I've been seeing on Twitter or social media, like you know, like 
some of, I heard like some of the combo trials don't work because like they patch before the game. So I forgot, I guess they forgot to update some of the combo trials. The netcode's still good, but it's not Street Fighter 6 netcode, right? The one thing that Mortal Kombat does amazing over Street Fighter is the skins. Oh, so, well, they, well, they call it palettes in, in this game, right? And the reason why I think they, it's so good is because one, there's so many palettes and skins that you can already get uh street fighter i don't think we all we, we don't have anything past co uh costume one and costume two yeah right that's it we haven't got any like new dlc stuff the only thing we got is like battle hub cosmetics and i mean not a lot of people really i, I guess like we control people with like kind of like oh let's make like these these freaks of nature but i want to so i want to see what my costumes look like with like you know you, you saw the like the little jury uh cute outfit with the pink you know like yeah. the, the onesie and everything like i like th they showed it as like concept art but it's not released yet like the game has been out for since june and we haven't had any you know things to buy we had the tmt but bro that was 15 dollars a pop yeah bro. so <laughs> that that buying the whole tmt set that cost more than the game yeah <laughs> right at least we got that theme though at the battle of, bro. no that, that that theme sucks after after a week <laughs> but yeah mortal Kombat, right like you can like uh you earn currency in the game right so you can so it becomes a gotcha game um where you can spend gold to like go to the shrine and you can spend a thousand gold to get a pull and what you can pull is you can pull concept art, you can pull skins, you can pull like uh, like weapon items. You could change how their weapons look like. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so you can earn that. And then there's also a second currency, uh, with the silver coins, and you can use those silver coins to buy your your character slash cameo like cosmetic items like more clothes okay well more skins and more like changing the weapon items to look different and that's seasonal so that means after every season it will be replaced with new items and you can earn them and like just kind of like get get new stuff that's what i assume that's gonna happen that's crazy there's seasonal what's also cool is uh when you're playing online and mortal Kombat, even though the netcode's not the best you got voice chat so voice chat could be could be a, like a double-edged sword right it could be fun or it could be very like negative depending on who you're fighting but i think it's really cool that you can communicate with voice chat especially if it's like you know you maybe you never met the person before you're like maybe you guys vibe very well right and you guys be, could, could become friends and street fighter 6 doesn't really do that you know we talked a lot about mortal Kombat cons right but street fighter cons i think the only thing now is kind of like the input system it seems like that's like yeah. the major talking point is like they said they made a fix for it but i've been actually having new issues after yeah, they made a patch of sometimes i just randomly don't get drive rush like if i want to drive yeah, rush, I'll, same. Uh, yeah i'll just get a parry and then i'm like my drive rush doesn't come out afterwards so i'm just like this didn't happen before the patch you know yeah that's why that's why i meant like my input just gets eaten yeah it makes it makes me question like is my stick broken and i just plug into a different stick and i'm like well it's happening onto the second stick so i'm like i don't think my stick's broken unless my second stick is broken <laughs> uh, so yeah do you feel like mk1 was an upgrade to mk11 i played mortal kombat 11 for one hour of my life and that was when the game first came out and i was like i don't like this game coming from a like I t always talk about Mortal Kombat X, Mortal Kombat 9 being so amazing. They're like so good, so fun. Like I love like Mortal Kombat X especially. It's like one of my favorite games of all time. And because the combo and the action and like just kind of like the the, the flow of match, it's just really so fast, good. Right? Yeah, it's so good. Um, it makes so much sense. The variations uh, were, were so unique as well too. But ultimately, I just love the combo system. It was so easy to understand. When Mortal Kombat 11 comes out, I'm like, where are the combos? And then people just drop out of combos because they use like their the MK11 breakaway system. It's like, so they just slip out of your combos. That's like your breaker. It just really wasn't great. Like I, I, I never, after that, I just never gave it a chance ever again. Cause I'm just like, I'm just so turned off. So Mortal Kombat 1 comes out and they have this cameo system with assists, right? Cameo is assist. So and once you see how long these combos can be uh the amount of creativity you can do with these combos um it's really cool like it's kind of like the mars capcom where you can like really extend your combos in many many unique ways and i thought it was so good like i'm 
I really love Mortal Kombat 1 uh, right now. Like, I love playing it because the fact that I can just kind of like, it kind of reminds me back of that MK9, MKX feel. And the movement of the game is really fast with like dashing, back dashing, playing footsies, trying to land a hit to do like a really crazy combo. It's really, really fast. I know people are saying on Twitter, like this game needs to be a first at three. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't disagree. Like, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, no, we need to keep it first to two. Uh, I'm really happy that like both games actually got that major upgrade because, you know, I, I was really scared about fighting games in the future because of like, they were so heavily focused on like, you know, making things what they thought accessible, accessibility was. Fighting games in general kind of lost a little bit of, a little bit of flavor. And then, you know, some companies are starting to like do that now because they're like late on the game. So, you know, I'm just really hoping that everybody kind of just sees that like, Yo, the best thing about fighting games is just allowing people to have great net code and have fun and have a lot to do for players. Do you think MK1 right now is pushing themselves for being the hardest? Or do you think Street Fighter 6 is pushing themselves as like being like the top dog? I get this question every day in my chat. So which which game do you like better? Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? Which game is better? And I'm like, it's just so hard to just choose one uh, because I'm known more of a you know, like a Capcom, Capcom guy, Capcom fanboy, 100%. I agree, I'm a Capcom fanboy, but I cannot deny that I am, I am, I am like not having fun with Mortal Kombat One. I love it. It's like I'm having such a blast playing Mortal Kombat One. So it's just really hard to choose uh, between the two, which one is better, and overall gonna come out as top dog. If I had to choose, like, for, like from a neutral standpoint and looking at all the pros and cons. You know, it would have to be Street Fighter because, like, they polished the game. The game is so polished. Mortal Kombat 1, it's such a great game, but there's so many little bugs that it just pisses me off a little bit, right? Like, you know, there's little bugs, right? And then, like, I can, like, look past it because, like, ultimately in the end, like, I'm still having a blast. But if I have to be picky, because this is a very picky question, yeah, you have you you know you have to lay out these bugs that they, they that do exist in Mortal Kombat One. They had the player one advantage thing, and you know, even though they they addressed it and they fixed it right away, they still haven't addressed all these other like quality of life bugs that could make the game so much more polished. It does seem Mortal Kombat One came out so rush yeah. because out of nowhere they're like, oh yeah, this game's coming out in September after seeing the Mortal Kombat trailer, and I'm like wait what that's like five months from now right so like it's like it just seemed like there was no build-up it was like oh yeah we're releasing Mortal Kombat 1 by the way it does seem like it's a maybe like an 80 percent product when you're playing story mode there's literally a scene with Sindel where the subtitle says oh uh, mk1 underscore Sindel underscore mp4 like so i'm like i i do not oh. I, I i do not know what she said like the subtitle was was literally just the, the the file's name and not the actual like what she said Jesus. so it's just little little bugs you gotta, here think, you there. gotta give me a clip of that bro. <laughs> it's yeah it's it's there but i love him i love mk1 like i said i even though I'm saying like you know, those little bugs and blah, blah blah, but you know everybody knows that these bugs do exist. It's coming to the first year, almost the first year of Street Fighter VI, and um, you know Capcom haven't announced any balances, which is uh, really good. And um, you know I want to talk about with my special guest. Diaphone, what's good, Diaphone? Yo, what's up, boys? And I gotta say, this is already cat. This is gonna be interesting, interesting discussion because I totally agree, disagree with the no patch philosophy. So I'll let you start, but why? Why do you think that? I feel like there's a lot of characters that were portrayed really bad, and um, as the time progressed, it became really good. You know, when the game first came out, everybody was like, "Yo, DJ's the best character in the game." Now DJ's not the best character in the game anymore. Now it's a new character that's the best in the game, and I really like the fact that we got that because now we get to kind of see uh, what can these characters mm -hmm. do and be fleshed out within the year, especially that we have so much, uh, we have so much like um, information that is on the internet that I feel yeah. like people will always find unique ways to kind of like uh, push the character, you know? I just think that because there's no patches, characters get that time to kind of like really push out so you can kind of see what they actually need rather than just giving them things that were that they already have i kind of agree so there's a few things that like really appeal to me and the one is like we, it's true that even after a year the year is over and the game gets patched like we still won't know the true balance right i mean you can think of like what was it super turbo where 
T like old T Hawk was like bottom three and then he shot up the tiers like 10 years later but at the same time like it's still pretty obvious that like certain characters are underpowered and certain characters are like really really strong right i still expect to see jp ken etc like at the top like it doesn't matter like we give this game 10 years and those characters are still gonna be at the top right and like we knew that probably like month one month two and so to me it's like i think this is kind of cool because like no game has really done this where like on launch we're just not gonna patch it for a year and it's kind of like a weird like social experiment <laughs> so to speak where it's like we get to see how these tiers will develop and and you know we're not we're only like halfway through the journey so we'll, we'll continue to see more but at the same time like i wish there was like maybe like a post evo patch like tweaking it a little bit like a minor patch you know like like give Jamie a little bit of love. Like we know Jamie's not top tier. Give him a little bit of love, right? Like we know Zangief's not top tier. Give him a little love. Like we know Lily's not top tier. Just, just a little bit, you know? Just a little bit to like keep the game a little bit fresh and to keep the tiers a little bit more ambiguous. I think that's why I would prefer. Let's say for example, you were Jamie and you were fighting the best character in the game. Would you think Jamie, that Jamie player cannot win? I mean, of course not, right? But it's, it's very obvious that Jamie's like has many disadvantageous matchups. It's just like, I don't know how disadvantageous they are. I don't know if they're like, you know, 5.5, 4.5, 4.6, 7.3, 5, et cetera. But I know they're not the best matchups for Jamie. <laughs> and like, yeah, if you look at the tournament results, like they prove it, right? Like no Jamie's doing super well. For one, I still think the game's a bit too early to like know every matchup to a cup of tea. I do, take, I do think it takes quite some time. You know, I think characters like Kimberly, and she's like on the slightly quote unquote weaker side, but, yeah. you know, there's been players that are, like, doing super good against very strong characters, you know? And I, mm -hmm. and, I and when I watch that, and then I look at, like, other games that, like, you know, the low tiers compared to, like, other games when the game first came out, I think the low tiers in these games are pretty damn good. Oh, I know? agree. 100%. Yeah. And um, with the system mechanics, like, perfect parry and things like that, I look at it as, like, you know, maybe the system is so good that it doesn't really need anything right now personally i feel like three years for a patch is good but i do like the minor changes like very 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 minor mm -hmm. like updates and things like that like fix hmm so you actually think like they for season two a street fighter they should like barely patch it yeah i think i think the game i think the game is mad fun i think there's oh, only like four totally i agree. feel like there's only like four characters that are not having fun with. so like my thing is is why does everything else need to be adjusted if everything else is already good yeah, I think Capcom guy got lucky or, or just was really skilled in playing this game because you're right in the sense that like nothing's really broken and like every character can can win. There's nothing like truly disadvantageous, right? But at the same time, like they took that risk and they said, you know, before the game was even launched, like we're not going to patch this game until the end of Capcom Cup or whatever they said. If they did that for a game like MK1, like that game is broken and like I don't know if you've been playing yeah. or following. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Everyone's running Barack Cyrax, Johnny Cyrax, yeah. Raiden Cyrax, yeah. and it's like the meta is gonna be very stale, very quick. And there's like, in my opinion, like half the cast is just not viable. Half the cameos are not viable, right? And it's very obvious, even though it's like only one month into MK1. So like a game like that to go a year without a patch seems like absolutely crazy to me i'm pretty sure nrs is not going to do that so i think it like depends on the game I, is that fair yeah that's totally fair yeah. i mean i i think i think the problem is and i've been i've been always very vocal and people who watch this always know they know what i always say man like you know releasing unfinished products is not an excuse mm -hmm. for you having to constantly make packs you know yeah. if you just make if you you know if you make a lot of like it's crazy street fighter 6 didn't even have a lot of beta tests when you're a developer when you want to try to make everybody happy you have to take those risks i mean yeah. the hell they took they took the risk uh not going for like the hardcore players were just focusing on you know the casual audience so i feel like they should also take a risk where making them both happy yeah that's, that's interesting because i think uh a lot of the even like the hardcore audience like complains a lot like they complain about certain things on Twitter, right? Whether it's about perfect parry or drive rush being in or un inert, like hard to react to. Not that I think Capcom should listen to people on Twitter because you get the worst game <laughs> imaginable. Yeah, right? exactly. exactly. But, but it's obvious like people want change and I think change is always fresh, but at the same time, like, you know, some games change too much. Like Grand Blue, they had like, what, 
10 patches oh in the first God, year bro. and like it really that's turned people off right so like obviously there's a balance right but to me it's like like how do you strike that balance and i'm not really sure because like you said like there's all you're always flushing out the meta like smash 15 years later you're still flushing out the meta so like you can't wait for the meta to settle because it'll it'll never settle like it doesn't matter how long it how long of a time period so in my mind you have to like you have to cut it off somewhere my like in theory cutoff is like like what you said you know there's four characters that can't party like everyone else like it's like when you know that for sure it's like all right touch up the game a little bit yeah and that's what i'm saying like minor patch it and then like you know have like a big update like at at the end of the year or after every like two years or you know something that keeps the game fresh and keeps it new and keeps people wanting to come back as far as people like you know keeping the game fresh you know when i play street fighter 6 as a player it's still still fresh it feels fresh like mm -hmm. i'm still learning things, yeah you know but i i know for like the uh, audience that are like very casual it may not be like fresh for them but i personally think with the dlc characters and how um world tour mode is and how avatar battle is i still feel like it's also fresh for them too like you know aki bringing like new move sets i i feel like that's like a fresh thing for world tour do we do we actually need anything outside of like the four characters we mentioned not not really i think yeah which is good that means mm -hmm. capcom did a great job i think that's right. perfect yeah yeah let's hope that other games don't you know other games don't need that but i agree like if motor combat sick the way it is there will only be Baraka members. That's what I'm saying, but, bro. Yeah, but I, but I feel like in Street Fighter Six, it will not be that. Yeah. But there will all, but, but there will be a dominant popular character. Right. Like obvious. Yeah. Like you look at the tournaments, right? JP Ken. There's a lot of characters that are like really good. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. It's roster. good variety, and it, I think it's fresh. I just think you know, if you touch up the game, I like you don't want to do it now because it's like it's the middle of like CPT season and stuff. But like like right after Evo, you know, touch up the game a little bit, make it a little bit more fresher, a little bit more variety, and then keep the game till you know season two. I think that would have been just a little bit better. But I think how they're doing it now is good. I just you know, I think you could. Like in theory, like retrospectively, elevate a little bit. But let me ask you this: Do you think the balance is good for a first year game? Hell yeah! It's it's so yeah. much better than I was expecting, to be honest. Do you feel this game needs a balance? Like it, it like needs. It. If you had to look at this game, be like, oh no, nah, we gotta we gotta pull this out right now. Like, no, nah, does this game not. actually? This game actually needs a balance. MK One needs a balance bit change. This game, yeah. like I think it's it's gonna thrive competitively. Balance changer, no. They should add more DLC. Keep the game pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I think add it. I think man, I, honestly, yo, real, before I leave, adding more DLC is cool. I don't think characters, but I think like game modes would be cool. Yeah, I, and I think both. Yeah. I think both. I think four compared. So Street Fighter Five had six DLC first year. This game has four. Just saying, yeah. you know. Yeah, but look, but look, but look how much. Higher. I agree, but I just think it's harder to make six fresh new characters that are like fleshed out with like their design and six then five because five was like yo you got your normals you got v trigger you got v reversal mm -hmm. that was it and critical art nah, I you got, agree. You got, okay yeah okay, okay. Three uh, super, you, you target all combo right. all right give me more costumes then you you're right yeah, I, i'll give I you that point that. give us more costumes yeah. <laughs> well we got some that we got some that got announced we just don't know when it's dropping i know but yeah, 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 Capcom could be making like money over fist. They just had costumes. Die phone, what's good? What's good, everyone? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Kizzy. Which are the top five hardest characters in Street Fighter Six? Yeah. So can we just start by defining hard? Who's hard to pick up, like at low level? Who's hard to like get master with, and who's hard to like win a tournament with? Yes. Is that kind of the vibe I'm getting? Yes. So, like a combination of all three. Yes, a combination of all three. Yeah. Right. Like like a character to me that's like easy to pick up, but like hard to win a tournament with is Kimberly, right? Free. Because Kimberly can like, she has a lot of gimmicks that are very beginner friendly, right? Like you can just do slide or EX teleport, like things that carry you a lot, but high level, like people are really good at dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So like her, I don't know where I'd put because like I, on the one hand, I think she's like pretty, she can carry you a lot until you get to a certain point. And then it's like kind of same thing with Honda, right? Like Honda's like the easiest character for like a beginner. But if you're trying to win a tournament, yeah. Honda's, Honda's pretty tough to win a tournament with. I wouldn't consider Honda like like just general vibes I get. I wouldn't consider Honda like a top five hard. Nah, right? but Honda's Even definitely he's probably, like top five hard to win the tournament with. Yeah, that's but we have to give him like all three. You know, the all yeah, three. Okay. Let's start with I think the most obvious one, which is Aki. I think this Aki, character yes. oh does it doesn't matter which one you're choosing, low, middle, high, like this character is just hard. Like, yeah. 
like at low level, like she doesn't have anything super abusable to like just throw out. At maybe cruel fate because you can like jump in and like you know be plus, but even then, like it's not it's not anything that crazy. Like you can throw a fireball, but it's very susceptible to jumps, and her anti-airs are very situational. I still I actually think I'm like a one of the people that actually believe in the character. I think the character is just extremely hard, and it's gonna take a while for people to like figure out the character. So for example, like you know, when someone jumps at you, you have to calculate like I have three different anti-airs and they're all <laughs> viable and they all work at different ranges and you have to like think like right away which one do you do and that even that alone is very tough whether they're poison whether they're not whether you get a jungle state with something that has more jungle points or not just so much to the character so I, I think that character has to be if potentially the hardest in the game yeah I think. yes I agree with that I think uh, the normals are really hard to get by your frame data is really hard to get by so you can't just kind of like skip your way you can't skip steps right mm -hmm. and then like uh the technicality of her is like very very unique for her because you know everything revolves around poison so you have to get there first and really get the game ball your ball rolling we got one that's one character we got our second character for me has to be ryu oh okay yeah i actually think ryu is actually pretty rough i a lot of people say like Yo, he's easy to pick up, you can win, and things like that. But I think because of the game that he's playing in right now, I actually think mm -hmm. not that easy. And his combo links are actually not as easy as everybody, you know, says. Like, you know, obviously you mm -hmm. do like the drive rush, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in terms of everything else, definitely not an easy character to just pick up. I would say Luke is actually the easy character to pick up, you know? Like, you know, like oh, everybody yeah, sure. back in the day was like, yo, man, you know, if you want to start the game, Ryu and Ken, I actually don't think that it's just... Ryu and Ken this game. I think it's Luke. Like, I think Dinja's setups is really hard to, like, to remember as well. So I feel like he has a lot of things going for. And also, like, uh, you know, again, like, his normals, like, he don't have abusable normals that are, like, yeah. you know, really good. So, I, And I also think he's hard to win at high level, too. Because, like, everybody else is doing, like, crazy beat, like, bull and, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. JP got portals and things like that. My man Ryu got Tatsu. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, so I kind of get that vibe. I think it's more of, like, the, you don't have bull to kind of carry you yeah yeah media, more high level like you have to play straight up and like even as a beginner player like i think ryu is good because he teaches you like the fundamentals of the game but it's hard to like pick up ryu and win as compared to like ken or luke because ken you can just you have abusable normals you have h dragon lash you have you know fireball drive rush you have things that like carry you a lot right. easier than than ryu i think and then at high level i think he's actually like a little underrated in my opinion we just don't see ryu because ken is basically a better ryu right, right. luke is just a better ryu so right. i think like the difference in strength between like ken and ryu is not that much but it's still enough that like you know, high level players aren't gonna aren't gonna pick Ryu over Ken. But. Right. Like I also mm -hmm. think learning fundamentals is also hard for a new player. So that's oh, why yeah. I also put them there. It's like, you know, you're learning fundamentals which is hard and then you gotta apply it to matches where everybody's like flying with dragons and shit. it's also mm -hmm. hard, you know. So I will propose I think you might have a hot take up or you might have, have an opinion on this, but I actually think Jamie is bottom five too. No nah, I, I I'm on I'm nah. on board on that. I was okay, that was the okay. second <laughs> I, I picked Ryu because I was like I, I think he's gonna pick Jamie, so I let him have the Jamie pick. That's but fair. But I'm gonna pay. Jamie is actually one of the hardest characters to play. I don't think the character is very good. I think the character. I personally think Jamie's the worst in the game. Um, I don't. I, I don't think that. He thinks the worst. I think. I think who's the worst for me is like Manon. Oh, okay. I can see it. Yeah, you know, a lot of people. A lot of people don't think she's good. So, but yeah. Anyways, um, I don't think Jamie's very good. But even like at low level, I think there's like a couple things that are pretty abusable with him. Like you could do low forward and the Rekka, or you could throw out like a random palm. So I don't think he's like the hardest to learn at low level. But as you start getting more and more uh like going up the tiers like mid-level you have to memorize what all the drinks do and you know all the combos that go with the drinks and he has a lot of different combo routes a lot of different tech depending on how many drinks you have i think that could be a little hard and then at high level again like i think just the the lack of strength of the character the fact that this character relies a lot on neutral but doesn't have the strongest neutral and characters <laughs> yeah. that neutral him. like guile for example where you can just you know even if you get the hit on guile you get that lucky jump you know, most characters, they get the lucky jump, they steamroll. Jamie gets the lucky jump, you get a drink and you go back to neutral <laughs> or you or or you go drinkless and you're just you're you're playing half a character. You're doing, right? you're so. doing less damage, actually. Yeah. Too. You're doing <laughs> exactly. You're, he so. does 90 percent. So so the reason why I think he's hard at low level is because also changes when he levels up. So like his jab mm -hmm. changes naturally. Right. Yep. If he has one drink. So I think that's hard 
naturally. Yeah. Because, you know, they have to try to like get that and like, you know, they're mashing stuff. So like, you don't have a dive group and things like that. So that's why I think yep. he's actually like, he's, he's kind of hard just because you're not, you're locked to a lot of things. And then like you're yeah. doing less damage too. And the thing is the drink moves are so good that you just can't ignore them, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Like oftentimes, like if your character has extra moves, you can say, oh, don't use those and do the do the good stuff. But the good stuff is the stuff. Yeah, that you yeah, drink. exactly, exactly. So that's why I think he's so hard. And then as as he gets higher level, it, it gets harder for him. So like yeah. it gets worse and worse and worse. So I think uh I think he's definitely the third. Uh, hardest character. So I have one more in mind. So I think Dalsum is top five hardest. Ooh, so yes. I think yes. he's just, he's super unorthodox. I think he's the hardest character to pick up as a beginner, like even harder than Aki, because the game plan changes a lot depending on who you play. Uh -huh. You have to use a lot of the different tools. Like even Aki, at least you can do like fireball drive rush in. But you know, Dalsum, you have, you have to use all of his tools to be like effective, even at like a mid level, like you're progressing through the ranks. Uh -huh. And he, again, I think he's one of the most unpopular. Like, if you just look at CFN statistics, one of the most unpopular characters. Um, yep. There's a couple people that pick him at high level and they do well, but you it's know, rare. it's only those couple people. Yeah, it's rare, right? Yep. And I think the results kind of speak for themselves on this too. Zoners, I think, in this game are a lot harder to play than, you know, turn your brain off, drive rush, and H blah, Dragon blah, blah. Lash kind of yep. characters. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I, I like that take. The last character, I think, and uh, you I don't know if you agree with this. I don't know if you're on board. I think DJ's uh, will be my fifth choice. Nah, <laughs> no, nah, we so, so hear, hear me this. out. So hear me out. Charged characters are not that popular. And if it is, they have to have a spammable move. DJ don't have a spammable charge move that is like, you know, I'm I'm low level and I'm just like but but like you know boom 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 just having fun, right? Yeah. As you as you progress, it does get harder because when you want to use all of DJ's movesets, it is overwhelming. For your opponent. It's very overwhelming for both <laughs> for both players, right? At the higher level, it does get easier. It gets mm -hmm. way easier. But because you're gonna be fighting with other gladiators, all the other characters that are also really good, it's also hard for him too. See, the thing is, like, <sighs> I picked him specifically because learning him, when, when you pick up, when you pick him up, he's not as easy to get into because you have, like, you know, you have to learn yeah. the charge and things like that. You can't just, you can't just headbutt. You can't just block a ball, right? Yeah, I so, agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then as you get good, you have to learn, use all of his movesets to bring out the strength of the character, which is also overwhelming. Not saying yeah. that for, for the work that you put in, it's a great payout. I, I think he's bottom five hardest for beginners to learn, right? Yes. Because like you said, there's a lot of different tools to use. Um, even like drive rush shab, you're like, you, you don't want to teach a beginner, all right, the first thing you should do is drive rush shab, right? You want to teach them like a little bit more fundamental based or like, hey, do this move a lot, spam this move kind of thing. And I think um, like the gameplay isn't very straightforward for beginners. And you know, you have a lot of combos to learn. You have you have a lot of things to learn with the character. But I think as, I think DJ is too good of a character to be like hard to win with at top level. And it's like, you don't know what to do with the character. All right. Drive rush chef. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I, 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 I don't think the flow chart's like crazy hard that that he's like top five at high level to. Well, to who 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 would be your fifth? Yeah. So I gotta think. I, I gotta see the fact the that you have to think. See, well. see that that means that I'm right there. That I means know it's not DJ might, though. Look, look, he thing. might he might be the best fit. He might be the best worst fit. Oh, I actually am thinking Zangief. I'm see, thinking Zangief. no, Zangief is definitely easy low level, bro. Lariat three buttons. Two buddy Lariat? That Lariat's trash in this game. It's though. not about trash or not. It's about, at the high, at high level, it's trash. But we talking about low and mid level, it's definitely not trash. Larry anti it's two buttons, but half the cast has a one button anti Like Yeah, but that's the thing. It, it's not, it, dude, mashing SPD at low level, bro, you get, you randomly command grab them 50. Bro, grapplers at, grapplers at low level are the best characters in the game. You can't disagree nah. with that. Bro, you, you're telling me a low level like Honda player versus a Geef? Like well, what's what's the what's the Geef gonna do? They're gonna try to drive impact. Gonna drive impact. Headbutted. Drive impact. Uh, every character has that though. Maybe the character's not bottom five at low level, but this character is easily bottom five high level, right? Like I don't think he's very strong. I think he's bottom five in the game tier wise, right? And the fact that like if you just like yeah, Snake Eyes wants CPT, like Snake Eyes is the goat. He he did really well, but did you see how hard he had to work? He had no, to walk down with JP for like 99 it. seconds, bro. He's just My slowly man, inching his way I, forward. It was trying it to was, parry everything. It was, <laughs> it was definitely a struggle, but that's the only hard part 
at the level is at the highest level right there. But if you want to compare all three, I will say that DJ fits that criteria and Geek does not. Only if you have the all three, bro. That's I, I, I think the comments need to let us know this. Comments, what do you think? Yeah. Up, up, upvote is, is is a DJ or Zangief? Yeah, we can, we can leave it to the comments. I mean, all comment players are going to be like, yo, Zangief free. But all the all the comments are going to be like, who who who, who experienced? Oh my God. All Look, the comment people who went, know what's up. <laughs> with with, 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 the, with the, the, the comment people, who, the comment people who went through trauma, uh, learning fighting games, they're going to all be like, nah, Geef broke it. Top six most fun Street Fighter 6 characters. And here we got Justin Wong. What's good, bro? What's good? How you doing? Thanks for having me. But yeah, top six most fun Street Fighter 6 characters. I mean, there's a lot of fun characters in the game. First character, uh, I'm gonna let you pick. All right, first character is my current character I'm playing right now is Aki. Uh-huh. Uh, and the reason why I think she's so fun is because she just has so many different combo routes. Um, I do think the, the poison and... The fact that it doesn't just act as a poison it's like kind of like a extension to her combos right uh next time around is, is really really awesome nine advanced trial modes that means like she has so much sauce so much combo rounds and so much things to like look forward to like try to master my main character before aki was cami you know i was already at the, i was at i was at the top at, of, the, of the tier list and now i'm all the way at the bottom of the tier yeah, list yeah. right so <laughs> Like so a hard. Yeah, yeah. So there's a reason why I, I like Aki so much, even though like uh, she's considered uh, pretty low tier at the moment. The low tier characters have a lot going on for them. That they do. Even if they're not that good, they're just fun to play. I actually think that is a really, really good choice. And uh, I think the character that I'm gonna have to choose on my side. I always have to play them once a day just because of how fun they are. And that's Jamie. Jamie, yeah. You yeah. you are a Jamie monster. You like some Jamie. Yeah, I love me some Jamie, man. Jamie is one of the coolest characters to play one of the most fun characters to play i think his moves his moves set are just all cool even his uppercut like his dp i think it's like yeah. the coolest looking thing despite how bad it is i think even the drinking mechanic is really cool too and like, yeah i like it how should i play this matchup should i just try to get one drink and do this nothing like that it's like a lot of like thought process that is like super fun for me i like the fact that the first characters that we mentioned are the were... worst characters in the game <laughs> <laughs> they are both low tier as hell, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they are both worst characters in the game, but deeply, like, I just have fun with them. I, I always play those characters, but, you know, you know, so low tier heroes, we, you know, we care about you guys. I'm not going to stay in the low tier realm for the Damn, that character. was quick. You know, I, I just watched uh, Capcom um, Offline Singapore. My God, watching Rashid just go to freaking town and just do all these, like, long combos, long strings, Keep the pressure going. He just looks so fun. He's nothing like Street Fighter Five or She, where everybody just hated him um, and everything because of like how he's always so easy and top tier. He's just so flashy. So yeah, a, a lot of things that he does is very flashy. Like he could stay in the air for man long because he has this air move that kind of like keeps him in the air like a double jump and you can extend your combos that way like if you like stun somebody you could get two jump ins in a combo like literally you just do jump heavy punch and you bounce off and you do a jump heavy a kick and then continue your combo from there i'm always surprised i'm like oh that works oh that combos oh like, yeah some, i feel the same some, way i feel yeah, the same way I, yeah. yeah and i think that's really cool about about the character you know and he's not really easy either like his normals are really hard to use you know, they don't exactly. Have, he don't have like that range like the you know other characters have. I feel like he's like super balanced well around like you know like the drive rush mechanic because of how it's normal. Feel. Even though he's not like easy top tier, he's just that fun. And that's the best part about this game. It's like I think a lot of people might you know call me crazy. Or I think one of the most funnest characters I have played in fighting games in a long time has been DJ. Oh, this is uh, this is what we call bias, bro. I think DJ has this been <laughs> the most fun, the most fun for me, man. Like, like I know he's a charge character, and charge characters are not as fun. The sway is just cool when he does like Sobot Kid, like the faints. I love the faints. You know, combo routes are like mad cool. Uh, they might take a long time, but like, it's cool ass character, man. Right? Like he got a huge makeover, uh, because he was boring it in street fighter 4 um and he had no identity he was just like oh he's the guy clone of the game right that was like his stigma fun stylish has his own identity not fully a charge character it's like a hybrid charge character now 
So yeah, I, I can see why you have fun with him. He's most likely a Fisher Price character, but when you learn all of the cool stuff, he's like one of the most sickest characters. Like you like, damn, I can do this. Damn, I can do that. You like, he he he's one of those characters. Like every time you play him, uh, like you play him a month, you're like, yo, I can do this. I like feel so good with him. And then another month, you're like, man, I thought I was good with him last month. Nah, I'm definitely good this month. Then you just keep learning. Yeah. Like he's one of those type of characters. Like he gets stronger the more you get good with him. It's biased, but you know it is. What well, it is. well, I wouldn't call it bias. I wouldn't call it bias. I would say it is a very educated experience choice. Mm, bet. <laughs> <laughs> For my number three, I'm probably gonna have to choose Chung Li. Oh, that's a good choice. Yeah, same makeover because obviously she has stances uh, now with the Serenity stance. She just has the complete package. Like she is also a character that is rising up in the tier list. Um, a lot of people, you know, finally are saying, "Yeah, Chung Li is actually really, really good in this game." And I'm like, "Yeah." That was coming from the worst character in the game, by the way. Bro, I don't know. I just feel like it was just people were just like. <laughs> Yeah, she she was bad, and I was like, "Why is she bad? She's not. She's insane. Like, her anti tires are amazing. Her fireball is amazing. Her pokes are amazing. Like, everything about her is amazing. She has a great level one. Her level two goes to projectiles, um, and a strike invo. It's an amazing level two, um, and she, her combo game is just everywhere. A special special cancel only for Serenity Stance. Like." Oh yeah, all these moves can cancel in the, in the Serenity stance and you can follow up. They're not safe, but the fact that they gave her that option to kind of like mix things up in like in like kind of like clutch scenarios, I think that's really cool. Her walk speed though, let me talk about the walk speed. Oh, that yeah, walk speed of course. is so ridiculous. It's like final stage nine boss energy right now. It's always been there, you know? Yeah. It's always been there in, in, in every Chung League um that she's in and i'm like anybody who's related to her most likely got the same walk speed too <laughs> <laughs> all right so now my third character don't you, know, you say ken don't you say ken bro nah come on bro you know me better than this we my third it. character that I, I thought was bad fun she was she was the original character i played before today and that's kimberly you know she she is like od fun in terms of like you know pressing the buttons getting the Target combos into the run. Yeah. The spray can is the coolest mechanic ever. It combos into the spray can. You throw mm -hmm. combos to the spray can. She gets like a TK, like command grab. And, you know, she yeah. gets the loop and stuff. Like, it's, everything about her is like really, really cool. You know, I wouldn't say she completely like replaced this guy for me. Yeah. But she, they, she, they did her well in terms of being like the successor. The only thing I would say to make her more fun is like, let me refill a spray can without having, w w like, when I, when I have one left, not zero left. Yeah, that, I think that, I think that would be cool. Like, or maybe have like an OD spray can regen or something. Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I, I feel that way too. I don't like how you have to go to zero, and then like yeah. even then, like the only way for refill two, you have to e exit. Yeah. You know, so you can't like. You can't like micromanage like two cans because yeah. a lot a lot of people don't know, but like uh, I don't know if you can do it another way, but if you do a level one, it automatically just takes a spray can. Yeah, I don't like that. Now we gotta pick a character. We gotta both pick a character that we both agree that is fun. Uh hmm. how about this? On the count of three, we just say the name. I'm, I'm, I'm not ready, though. Hold on. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. All right. One, two, three. Read. <laughs> get, get off i don't want to be part of this video anymore come on man you don't hear get them off. horns howling bro my man get my off. man be putting those he be putting those stand fours all the way from his back bro my man be leaning with it bro nah bro nothing fun about jp bro. you don't think he's fun bro come on nah, nah he, he's he's not i had like when i was taking the master <laughs> I had the, the most boring time I had with getting characters to master was JP and Jury. I'm like, bro, like this is just insane. I'm just having. I was so bored. Here's, here's, and just snap my fingers, put a little orb on the screen. Here's, <laughs> here's. It, like I think the the combos aspect is really cool, but like the general game plan of like when you first start learning JP is the most boring shit ever. 
I think the coolest part about him is just aesthetically what he's doing. Like, you know, my man got a stick. He be swinging at you. You know, no hurt box. You know what I mean? No hurt, no hurt box. box. Yeah, just swinging. It, it ain't for me. That's all it I got to say. It, it ain't for me. I'm, I'm, I'm mad you said JP. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm mad you said JP. <laughs> Come on, man. Look, you don't, th you don't think that's fun? Crouch fierce anti-air? No. It's not. I feel like Ryu's is, he's so fun. Trying to win with him in this game with like, you know, trying to play Street Fighter is I think the most fun thing about him. And he just hurts. Like he just does a grip ton of damage. When you land a standing heavy punch drive rush, you feel like a God. Bro, his quotes when he like does you is crazy. My man, when he parry, he's like, you're not getting through. I'm like, damn. Uh, he, he, he does his level two and, and, <laughs> and he says, I'm giving it my all, <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, but I still at level one. <laughs> I'm really sure they get level two. <laughs> Top five tips and ways to get better at Street Fighter Six. If you had to choose, what would be like the first thing that you would do? That's tough because I the first thing I always tell people they need to improve on execution. Ooh. I feel like execution is the the first thing I'd be like. You need to get your execution down, right? People will, will come to me and be like, oh, I know this is my first fighting game. You know, people are telling me I need to learn the frame data and and, and neutral and footsies. And I'm like, can you do a combo? And they're like, oh, my combo game is not that good. I'm like, well, that should be where you need to start. If your execution is ass and you actually have a chance to hit me and you're doing no damage to me, then clearly like you're not going to win no matter how many times you win the neutral or or whatever right combos they save lives that's what yipes has always said and it is completely true i always tell people like once you do these trial modes do these combos that you see on twitter that you you know from other people try to master them like do do it 10 times on the left side do it 10 times on the right side if you can't do it in a row then you got to start over so that's kind of like what i always tell people to to master because what if their hands are just not used to the dexterity of like doing like classic controlled motions right like a lot of times people have trouble just doing fireballs and sure you can so try and do a combo like a bud into it like that's 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 already like gonna take you maybe like an hour to try to just get down like maybe a little bit comfortably for me if i had to choose number four it's like learning how to air tire mm, you know yeah. it's, it's a street fighter six right you know you get overwhelmed there's a lot of things going on and you know when, when people are playing you know they're gonna try to jump at you yeah you know? exactly they just they just try to have fun right so uh you know anti-airing i think it's like the key thing and like some characters they have a button where they can just do the anti -air, right yeah so like, i think like a crowd like a crouch, crouch yeah crouch every punch there's a lot of characters that also have that that's like super good you know rasheed rest in peace even while i was watching gachiku man i was watching him do it, it, it's, DP and it's still hit. it still works you just have to do it in a different timing right uh you're able to anti-air uh, consistently in one game and that carries over to like future fighting games that you will you know gradually play and you're gonna know that that's my source all right number three understanding like when's your turn like frame data yeah it's a pretty hard topic right to for people to understand i guess the easiest way to break it down for frame data is like there's always a magic number that you want to follow so if we're talking about uh street fighter 6 the the magic number is i i would say four right, right? like every every character has a four frame normal that means that's your fastest normal of the game so a lot of times when you're trying to punish things or take your turn back you will most likely a lot of times press that four frame button obviously it's not going to be the 100 percent like case solver for every situation because there's always going to be uh visual like distinguishes of just like okay this normal pushed me back so far so obviously my four frame light punch or crouching light punch will not reach but we're going to choose we're going to say four frame is the magic button when you block something and it's a minus four move the only thing you can punish with is your minus four with your four frame normal but when you're in training mode you always want to have the frame meter on the frame meter actually teaches you so much about the game even without anybody's help because literally you can press a button and the game will tell you oh this is a six frame normal this is an eight frame normal chung lee's standing medium punch is six frames right and then after you hit with it you're plus six so what that means is if you're plus six if you press a normal that's six frames or less 
you were able to do a combo. Understanding frame data will teach you also how to do combos just from looking at the data and not even have to play the game. Well, like I said, it's a little bit complicated at first, but once you have the frame meter on and it tells you, it really helps a lot. And the other aspect in the in terms of blocking, obviously the frame data from blocking versus hit is going to be different. If you block my six frame normal that gave me plus six on hit, if you are blocking it, it will probably be right. like minus two for example that definitely means it's the end of your turn if you press your standing jab which is let's say your four frame you have to think of it that's a six frame move now because you're in a minus two situation if the defender presses their four frame button when after the opponent put themselves in a minus two situation you have to think of that oh i'm plus two so that means right. my four frame normal becomes a two frame normal when i press it so when a yeah. two so if you're a two frame normal you're you're now two frame normal versus uh the now opponents uh six frame normal hits who will win um the the lesser number wins right so that's kind of right. how you understand frame data um you know in a nutshell in a, in a short video i would say like i said put the frame meter on in training mode it will teach you the world of street fighter 6 because a lot of times i see people just do like jab 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 sweep and i'm like why would you do the sweep there like they, you you're you're you're, you're gonna get counter hit it right and your people don't understand why i get hit there my number two is optimizing your drive gauge mm, yeah this might be a hot take but i think the drive gauge is way more important than your health gauge bro, i mean that's your that's your lifeline right there bro yeah <laughs> that's really your life bar you know life bar that has region you know you don't want to be put in burnout in this game so often uh no matter how good you are no matter how bad you are being in burnout sucks how to like use your resources like should i spend this or you know uh practice combos that like spin but like you kind of gain a little bit back so you don't it don't be too much of a expense you know like when the drive reversal all of that i feel like that specific mechanic even though it's like it feels like very like offensive in like a lot of cases i do feel like eventually there's going to be like the defensive things that you're going to really need to know. You know, it's just recognizing when to use your resources Yeah. at this time. You know, it's six bars and you definitely don't want to hit zero. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like most of it is already covered, but if we had to choose one more, it would be uh, the ability to watch yourself play. Oh, you mean the one that nobody likes? Nobody wants to do nobody it. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody bro. wants to do it, but watching yourself play play watching yourself lose to kind of dissect what did i do wrong it's the most humble check in the world because you have to humble yourself to be like damn i suck damn i lost damn why do i suck why did what did i do wrong blah blah blah, blah. i need to figure this stuff out and i mean a lot of times you know there's there's so many times where like even myself i'm like i need to take a day before i like watch like why i lose a tournament in the heat of the moment you're not gonna be like damn i messed up here right you're gonna be like oh okay i got hit there blah blah, blah. but you just you might not even know why you got hit there that's why you need kind of like to watch it on the side so you can actually take your time go back rewind fast forward let's say you do a combo and the first thing you do after the combo when you're okay is that like you just a meaty drive impact you might just do that every single time and then you, and you might not realize like that's why you lose because people are just counter di you you're just thinking of it as like damn he reacted to my driving back but you're not thinking of it as like damn i'm always doing it after this combo scenario right so that's what you want to figure out is like you want to figure out like when did when did this person figure out my pattern there's always a pattern it could be big it could be small but it's always there and if somebody finds it they can exploit it so your goal is to make sure that you you also can find your pattern and improve on changing it where it's not as predictable as you know like the other person can find it. When you watch um, your own self do a pattern and then like sometimes while you're playing you do it, you can instantly know how to turn it off because you know. Like, now ah, yeah, like I, now you know I, yeah. Yeah, you know, and like the only the only way for you to find that information is literally to watch it. You can no one no one no other way <laughs> yeah you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, uh, yeah no other way like you have to like review the bonds and be like oh yeah i'm doing this okay i'm gonna turn that off and then do something like this here is street fighter six bar for you gosh th this is a really really complicated question so first of all no i don't think the game is boring T to be fair like just to get it out of the way street fighter six i think in its current state is extremely balanced like we've seen you know like Zangief can win tournaments like 
Lily can win tournaments. Ryu can win tournaments. So like even the the worst characters in the game can win. Obviously, they're at a disadvantage still, but I think the game is really balanced. But I think that there is sort of a difference between should we get a patch because balance is a problem or should we get a patch to make the game more interesting? And I think in that respect, it might have been a mistake for them to wait this long without patching just in terms of like keeping things interesting. So I'm not I'm not bored with the game, but I do think uh, it, it's probably hurt the game overall to wait this long. I see. You know, personally for me, I actually have been having a blast with the game. It's more of like, you know, because of like how the online infrastructure is, that that gets boring. But right. when I play the game, it's great. So I think for like, I, but I feel like for pe people who are like, you know, get like new skins and stuff for like the battle launch, I feel like they're kind of having a blast. You know, like every time I right. go to the battle launch, bro, they like, bro, I think they talk more than actual people who play for money. <laughs> It's actually kind of crazy. So I'm like, man, they really playing for the skins over here, huh? Yeah. But for us, for us ranked grinders, do you think maybe it's it's a little worse off? So, you know, I don't think it's so again, I think it's not it's not boring because of like there's no balance or anything like that. But you know, right. it's like the matchmaking region lock thing, right? Mm. So you know, uh, I feel like when you make it to a certain level of the game, you just play against the same people over and over again. And that gets boring because you know, like there's no progression. And yeah, I think that they, they did a really good thing by adding the uh, the like new ranked system when you get to master and like there's like a new icon if you get to like top a thousand or whatever. I think that was good, but it's still held back by the problem of, you know, you just kind of end up fighting the same people a lot, especially if you don't live in a major city, then it's like a huge problem for those people. I really don't care for having like a balance change, but I think the problem is is that if you're not going to change the balance for a year, I feel like you have to do a lot of other things to keep the game exciting. Right. You know, like a lot of things, like, you know, new costumes, get stuff in return for playing. <laughs> yeah, you got to like grind story mode, which I didn't find that fun, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. So like they didn't do a lot of stuff for people who play rank. Like I, li I, I liked a lot what Street Fighter Five did where like uh, you got fight money by just playing rank constantly, right? Yeah. And they were like, they gave you like little mini challenges. And that was cool. You know, uh, I, I feel like if the game had like a balance, some characters that are like strong now would have been 10 times stronger hadn't we just listened to like, Right. We would have been, we would have been worried about like Honda and stuff. <laughs> That's yeah. Like, those are the characters we were all complaining about on day one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then people were like, JP's not that good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They were like, oh, you know, the character that's like really godlike, it's like, you know, uh, or, or who's really tragic, like Chun Li. You know, everybody said Chun Li sucked. Yeah, so like, yeah. Uh, like, so now, like, imagine like all these things that we would have got, and like they would have just changed over time with that. It's like it would have been really bad. And you know, I think the only biggest things that really need to be adjusted, balance wise, is like the bugs of the game. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of like game breaking bugs a little bit. It is in the game. You, you right mean now. like the like the no burnout ex thing? Or? Yeah, bro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like some characters have it like easy doing that. So uh, all right, so I, I think we we both agree that the game is not desperately need in need of like character adjustments, but what do you think about like system level adjustments? Like it, it, if they were to for example like bring down drive rush across the board, you know, make raw drive rush less rewarding or maybe do something yeah. with perfect parry. Do you think that would be good? Or, yeah that, that also has the same issue of like we didn't really know what was good when the game was new like we were all complaining about drive impact we had no idea <laughs> but now yeah. you know people are starting to get a little annoyed with these mechanics what do you think about that and um yeah and a lot of people they they made this statement it was like you know i think once people figure out perfect parry perfect parry would be the make or break it would make mm -hmm. you feel like the make or break of the game and uh it's coming to that fruition right that like perfect yeah. parry has made everybody like it's fuming. I, the idea that I like to make Drive Rush uh, more balanced is that it should be in punish counter state, right? Mm. So if you spend a bar and you get hit, you lose a bar for getting hit. And uh, I think that will make uh, like the offense uh, more balanced in terms of like, if you spend these resources, then like, you know, there's repercussion if you're wrong. Because right now, if I like, if, if I like Drive Rush and you like DP me, and then I get up and drive rush again, and you DP again, <laughs> you're about to lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sure, I lost like 30%, but you're about to lose like almost 100% because right, burnout right. is so, so like, you know, bad. 
Um, so I would like that. Uh, as far as Perfect Parry, I feel like Perfect Parry itself is good. I think the biggest thing that a lot of people have complained about is like Perfect Parry, you can just do it and like it's very hard to punish right there's not a lot of risk there yeah yeah and i think they should add like a little more layer to like risk in terms of like if somebody is tap parry that they should be more in like a punish counter state like they should be in a punch counter state more longer you know obviously third strike parry and ss6 parry are very different but like in third strike parry is really strong but there's a lot of ways to beat it as well like, obviously you can throw just like you can in six, but like, you know, third strike, there's like high low, you have to guess right. And you can like guess on like how many hits you're gonna do. So like you can, you know, make them whiff a second parry cause they think you're gonna do another hit. Or like you can, yeah, there, there, there are like various, you can stagger your timing and catch them cause they have to let go of blocks. So there's a lot of counterplay in addition to it being strong, but in six, there's really only one thing that deals with parry and that's throw, right? That's like the only thing. I honestly think that they should add like low parry back in, like make it a high versus low guess. They would have to completely rework the game around that, but I just think that that would be better because then they don't have to be that scared of perfect parry. Like the fact that perfect parry is a two frame window to me shows that they were rightfully scared of it being overpowered. So they made it like really, really precise to get the perfect parry window. And the fact that it has all this damage scaling too, like they yeah. knew, they knew that they had to be careful or perfect parry would be overpowered. But if they make it a guess of high versus low, then all of a sudden they can make it a little bit stronger because there's, you know, so much more risk of getting blown up if you guess wrong. Yeah, because like right now, like I feel like charge characters and perfect parries is such a combo strong combination mm -hmm. and like that's one of the things i think dj is like really good it's like you know uh like being able to hold down back perfect parry and then like ready to do like maximum upper you know right so, they try to they try to steal their turn back because they see yeah, it with parry and it's like no nope. yeah do you feel drive reversal should be like change and if so how do you feel how what do you think that it needs to improve on uh, as a mechanic itself. So. Yeah, it's tough because like not only I think a lot of people agree drive reversal is it's a little bit weak. It doesn't feel that good to use right now. And not only that, but it's competing with some of the strongest mechanics in the game. Yeah, like sure. thing, things that use drive gauge tend to be really strong, except for this one thing, drive reversal. So yeah, I, I think it could do with a buff. I mean, I don't know, like make it safe on block or something or make it a little faster so that it's harder to bait because like you can like you can react to it too that's the other thing is like you could be pressuring them and then you see the screen freeze for drive reversal and you have time to like dp or or whatever so i don't know personally i feel like defense is not that weak in this game in general because of perfect parry so i don't know if we're like that desperate for a, a defensive buff so I, I don't know i would be fine with it being buff but it's not really like my top priority yeah i feel like like we don't see it a lot in matches i never see it even even at like high level which i remember this always happens where if there's a mechanic that's not very commonly used, people are like, well, once the game gets figured out, people will use it a lot more. But that didn't come true with drive reversal. I don't think a lot of people are using it at any level of play, really. Yeah, it's been like five months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're still uh, we're still trying to figure it out, quote unquote, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our original point here of like, is, is the game getting stale? I think what you mentioned is a good point that like, it's been five months and we're starting to figure the game out. And I think like if we look back at older games, you know, like I, I first started getting into competing with Street Fighter 4 and like we were kind of just like happy with playing the same game for a year. You know, we would play vanilla SF4 for a year and then we would get Super SF4, play that for a year. And like we didn't get bored, but I think a lot has changed in terms of how quickly the games get figured out because of the internet and stuff, we figure games out so much more quickly. And, you know, obviously we're all happy that the games have much better online now. We have rollback and stuff. So that's obviously a good thing, but it has the side effect of <laughs> we grind out so many more matches, you know, like people, right. people are playing like a thousand matches a month or whatever. So yeah, like I think it's easier to get burned out and to, to, get tired of the game more now than it was back then, especially back then when like the online would be so bad that you would only get most of your good practice in offline, which you could right. only do, you know, so often. People's expectations have changed. You know, it might've been back in the day, we'd be like, all right, I'm gonna work my butt off to figure out this hard matchup where now it's like, I'll, I'll wait for them to <laughs> make the yeah. matchup easier. Yeah. But 
I do think that the developers are kind of playing into these expectations too. I mean, Street Fighter Six has a battle pass, man. It has it, know, it has a new character every every month or whatever. Every, so like yeah. they they're kind of trying to have it both ways of like this is a quote unquote live service game. This is a game that we want you to to log in every day, and we're gonna have you know online events and different things happening. But at, at the same time. I think that comes with the expectation of uh, people are gonna expect a little bit more responsive patching than what we're currently getting. Yeah, that battle, you got me on that battle pass, so I ain't gonna <laughs> lie. You know, like, did you uh, buy that, the battle pass? I, I actually did not. I cannot confirm or deny these allegations <laughs> that you are, I don't even, uh, like, the th this, oh, by the way, this is the other thing. This, okay, I, I changed everything I said before, it doesn't matter. This is the biggest fail of the game is that you can't change the song that you listen to I in the know, game and you you can spend real money to get more songs that you I can't know. even use in matches that that is whack capcom that please is rough that's another thing where costumes would be nice you know J just shake things up so i'm not looking at the same ken costume i've been looking at for <laughs> so yeah long. you know so uh they, i agree with you they dropped the ball on that really hard but the other thing is i i think that like people have very short memories also yes. don't you think that like you know if, if you ask like the average fgc person now like what do you think about street fighter 4 for example that's like my go-to example because it's a game i'm so familiar with it's like what do you think of the uh, game i think people would only have positive things to say yes. i think if, if you ask them like what do you think about street fighter 4 no one is being like it's trash, Elena, garbage, yeah, like no one's, yeah. but at the yeah. time, at the time people were going in and at the time yeah. there were people like that, like what I said, where they would win a tournament and they would be like, this game sucks. Like there were yeah. really people doing that all the time, but yeah. nobody remembers it. Yeah, that's pretty much all the questions I have, man. I appreciate you having to talk. If there's anything that you want to tell me, you let me know. Not much else to say. I really uh, always enjoy coming on and talking about things. So uh, I appreciate it. Make sure you guys hit like and subscribe to Fighting Game Select. If you're watching the video, if you made it this far, clearly you like the content. So you better like and subscribe. I'm watching you. We got the Street Fighter 6 channel that's going on. But I got one of, one, in my opinion, the best for Street Fighter 6. <laughs> I'm doing good. How you doing? <laughs> good, dude. Good, man. You know, we got this tier list going down right now you already know people want to hear your thoughts and hey, you know puck you always make me laugh man because you know <laughs> when something doesn't like when you don't like something it's like trash it's not like okay it, it has no it gets no forgiveness for you i like yeah, that man, like it, no yeah, way we're gonna start it off with i guess dawson right dawson is mm. the the character right here i feel like this character has been winning as of late well i would say a player particularly was winning as of late with this character and um, he's been spoken players that, you know, be playing like some of the top dogs that we're going to mention pretty soon. But how do you mm. feel about Dawson? Like, at least from my personal experience fighting, I just feel like there's not been any, like, in America that's really crazy with the character. So it's really hard to see the best side of him unless you watch people play it. But then when I'm watching people play, I don't know if they just don't know the matchup or they just not patient enough. So it's kind of hard to gauge Dawson unless I'm really fighting them myself. And when I do fight them, I kind of steamroll all of them. So I don't really understand where this character is. I feel like he's decent because he fights some the top tiers very well. Other characters just kind of seem like they washes him and he gets steamrolled very easily in this game because I feel like his zoning is not his strong point in this game like it's been in every other Street Fighter. They really made him a big rushdown character now, I've, in my opinion, in this game. So I feel like a, a lot of characters he can't just rush them down because that's just what they're good at. I would say Dawson is like a B tier, at least B tier. Yeah, at least Barry, you know, I feel like he's holding the down. You know, it's weird about Dawson because like, I agree with you about him not being able to like uh, zone. I feel like the only time he can zone is like with normals, right? But like, yeah. you know, with drive impact in the in the, in the the picture, you know, that that is not that strong, you know? Edmond, Honda, Civic, Honda. How you feeling? Um, I would say Honda is about C tier. I honestly don't think there's any like trash character. Well, there is, but she's not actually on the list right now for some reason. You don't have oh. the DLC. But oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we probably would put Aki down there. So just pretend <laughs> she's there. <laughs> That's, that'll probably be the only character I would put at the bottom of the trash. But I think every other character is, is okay ish. So just the game mechanics, I guess, kind of slow him down. He would be a lot better if there was no perfect parry, of course, in the game or drive impact his neutral is okay 
but there's so many zoners in the game, so you just kind of zone him out. They have to. He has to come to you. He can't use his brain dead head, but but slam strategy on those characters because they most characters with fireballs got a good anti here also. So yeah, they just kind of shut him down, and then they force Honda players to play differently, which they don't really like to do. So <laughs> it just never really looks good for that character. After if he's not fighting a character that has like no projectile, then I feel like Honda players just get lost, so that's what just yeah, slows yeah. the character down a lot. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm laughing at the comment, man. Honda doesn't like to play differently. <laughs> you know, it's my boy coming up. We gotta be nice, all right? What's your take? Well, there has to be like another tier added for DJ. Okay, if he's not right. gonna be in God tier, he can't be A tier. There's no way. I was gonna say, we gonna crank it up. This character, honestly, he just plays the game at a different speed than every other character. His drive rush is just crazy, so like it's very hard to check it consistently. You can't really do that every time. And then if you do start checking it consistently, they'll start doing drive rush sway and they'll punish your <laughs> attempt to check them. So it becomes a very um, strange mind game that's just really not in your favor. If the DJ player went, they could just keep doing sway and there's no punish if they see no button they just do the sway and you just go back to neutral where you just start up your drive rush again and you know you keep playing <laughs> yeah, that mod game <laughs> and then you start fainting the fireballs and trying to get them to react to that and you just keep doing it for a while <laughs> and then you do the drive rush again or jump knee eventually you want to do some jump knees you got to throw that in there it's part of it uh knock down for free drive rush pressure and then don't forget about dj he does have throw loops he does have to throw loop. You see DJ throw loop quite a lot because he's just, he's always in pretty much. At any moment, DJ could just get in and just start his throw loops up. And wait, then, you know, his wait. damage is insane. So what? we don't really need to talk about that. I definitely don't think he's the, he's not the best character for sure in the game. Because I think he has some hard matchups with characters that got projectiles. He can't really do drive rush on because they'll just keep getting hit by it. Next character, Manon. I don't believe she is bad as everyone say, in my opinion, from playing her. I feel yeah. like she's a B-tier-ish character. But uh, um, You don't really have to play using her command grab, which a lot of Manon players do. And they end up losing because of it. You can get the medals just by hitting your opponent with with punishes and combos and on top of that i feel like she has one of the best anti-airs in the game uh it kind of hits behind her head i feel like other button anti-airs in this game don't really have that you can it's very easy to cross them up and you know just take your turn that way but manan is very hard to even cross her up with her <laughs> crouch fears and also she has the EX kick, which is just a quarter circle forward motion. So it's pretty easy to input to get the anti-air. She has some of the best buttons to check things in the entire game. Her mediums. Yeah, bro. Checking so like a, yeah, like a drive rush or just like whiff punishing. And on top of that, she's very hard to whiff punish herself. Characters that really don't zone a lot, I feel like she fight all of them really well. I always call her anti the muscle relaxer, though. Like, <laughs> it, takes, it takes no energy. It's, it's like calm. You feel good because it never fails. I don't think that that's the crouch brainless. Uh, we got we got Miss Helmet right here. She yeah. for sure A tier. Like, yeah. there's, there's no question about that. Uh, just off her damage alone, I'm sure y'all yeah. seen plenty of <laughs> clips on Twitter or wherever it might have been. You've seen something about her damage. Like, you don't even really need to talk about that. But on top of her just killing you with one hit, she is the one of the only characters in the game that even when she's burnt out, she's still really good because she has her little armor move that beats drive impacts and is only a quarter circle back so it's very easy to input it so you don't get stunned a lot with marissa and then if when you do punish a drive impact with it, you get a big combo that's unscaled <laughs> and it's just gonna you, you probably gonna die to be honest the only bad thing about her is really just her anti ear to be honest that she's very easy to exploit with jump ins. You don't get two chances with her. If she yeah. get a combo as the first starter of her offense, <laughs> you won't. That's your last chance. So like you have to 
really live or die by that but, next decision it's, yeah. it sucks but that's really just her as a character no one's comfortable versus marissa we got uh johan in the building Man, i don't even know if we had to talk about this character at this point I, like i mean can we just put him can we you know, can we, we we, him? you know what to put him i don't have to tell you you oh, like this yeah. <laughs> we, there's <laughs> nothing we got to talk about on that one <laughs> click that right here real quick <laughs> johan yeah, this character is just, he's just crazy. Like, he has an ear throw that side switches, so yeah, I need y'all to know. Well, like, he has a side switch ear throw. So, if you ever try to jump on him and he's cornered, you're going to get put in the corner and he get free pressure after that. That's number one. That's the thing I feel like that's not really talked about about this character that JP players get away with because they don't use it that much. But the fact that he has that option to just throw you back into the corner while he's cornered yeah, it's is one of the craziest things uh i guess quote unquote zoner quote unquote yep the that has on top of him just having the best <laughs> pressure in the game his stand heavy kick is also a button that's not talked about enough yeah, one bro. it depletes mad drive gauge yep. i think it's plus two, two unlike plus two. most most characters plus button is only plus one he has a plus a heavy kick that's plus two he it's also perfect. has a target combo from the heavy kick that's heavy kick heavy punch and that's, is not even punishable that, on block so he can do that yeah none of that and it's cancelable anyway it's special cancelable so even if it was punishable sure. you can special cancel it and then so since he has all that he's able to just take up so much drive gate from his opponents and you have to be scared because he just plus in every one of those situations. You do the heavy kick target combo and then you throw out the EX clone or the EX shadow, whatever it's called. And you just, it's just continuous looping pressure for free. He has some of the most annoying zoning in all the fighting games. You put up the departure on, you can put it in front of you. You can put it next to your opponent. You know, <laughs> you do whatever you want with it. You can teleport to it after you put it out or you can make a spike come down. Or you could just let the spike come down alone and just continue zoning with other things while the departure is just sitting over top of your head, chilling, <laughs> and JP just like, uh, oh, yeah, it's time for it to explode. Let me let me just make this thing explode while I get this full combo that bounces you off the wall and you in the corner now. This character also just has make a wish combos. Like whatever combo you thinking about, <laughs> I, I promise you they work. Like I've never seen a character that every time I see a player in a tournament, I see a new combo that juggled more than the last tournament. And I'm like, bro, there's no way y'all finding this stuff out. You just doing stuff in the tournament and it's working for you. His juggle points is infinite. It's the make a wish combos. Whatever you think of, he's going to deliver it in his combo. So you don't even have to worry about that. His level two has to be the craziest thing in the game. Like, it's not there, automatic it, high low so. yeah automatic high low that you can't parry because it's a true block string if he don't want to do the high low he could mix you up and do like high he could do overhead his actual overhead before the overhead come out he could go low he could grab you he could set up a departure to be over your head with the things coming down so he could teleport on top of you for an instant overhead setup so now we got thank you Zangy for sure I would say it's probably C tier. Um character just hard to even know what he does because there's just pretty much no Zangy players. Like you're probably like three total in the world. So like in the world <laughs> That's in the world. Like I feel like there's like three total in the world. Like there's no way if you go on Zangief MR leaderboards there the whole page isn't even covered yet. Like it's just three. You you don't even <laughs> see a whole page to scroll down. He's still slow. But they gave him some mechanics now to help him fight zoning a little bit, I guess. You got you got the parry, so you can parry projectiles a bit more and you won't get chipped out finally. But I feel like Geef is just he's just Geef in every game. He can be broken, but when he's not broken he's just always like pretty bottom tier honestly so uh lily lily i think is also around c tier she can be better which is crazy it just really depends on i feel like the player that's playing her to make her better than what she is honestly uh if you just very good at getting stocks knowing how to get stocks safely then okay. she's one of the best characters in the game but you know 
her she also has no defense so when she does get knocked down you have to take some stuff unless you're going to wake up super which is pretty slow at least her level one yeah you can, kind of, you can mediate with like a medium punch and still blocking time so it's pretty bad to wake up with but you, you might have to do it sometimes <laughs> very easy to whiff punish her buttons even though she has boomerangs but her boomerang suck, bro. Just the worst <laughs> weapon ever in the Street Fighter game. <laughs> JP Kane has no hurt box, bro. Her boomerang's got the thickest hurt boxes of all time. So I don't know what they did with Lily, bro. They did her dirty. She's the only weapon character in Street Fighter history to have hurt boxes, bro. Vega been yeah. going crazy for years. You had Monat going crazy. You have Poison going crazy. Like they ain't never seen a hurt box, but Lily. They said, well. Yeah, sorry, bro. You just say you gonna have all the hurt boxes for <laughs> all the years of struggling people did against these weapon characters. We giving yo yours the hurt box, girl. <laughs> all right, this your boo right here, Ken. Cammy, uh, for sure, she's an A tier. Um, mm -hmm. She has the best level three in the game, and I think that's a big reason of why she, why she is as good as she is as a character. When she gets her level three, she kind of make a lot of characters just stop playing the game completely. And you just have to wait a lot more than you probably want to. And on top of that, she has a very good jump ins. So, you know, she has her dive kick, which in this game is pretty bad, but it's still good because it will beat an anti air if you try to press it too late. But if you just randomly hitting buttons, you can actually just get her <laughs> yeah, out of her you, dive you, kick yeah. for some reason. Dude, but when you're- It's bigger than Lily's normal. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but when you actually trying to anti-air it, it, that's when it actually becomes really good. Cause it's hard to anti-air when you're trying to anti-air it. But when you just swinging your buttons and you're not trying to anti-air, <laughs> that's when you get it most of the time. So the dive kick is very weird in this game. It's like really good, but bad at the same time. I feel like this character, she's definitely very good, but I think only the damage part is the only thing that's keeping her from being like the one of the best in the entire game. No, we got Ryu, bro. Ryu with streaks, bro. Oh uh, man, right? Ryu, I think is B tier. Ryu is one of the most well-made characters. Like, I don't really think you should nerf or buff him. I think what he does now is the best you can get him in this game i don't think there's really anything to change that's going to make him better you can only really make make him worse than what he is and the only problem he's not top tier is because the top tier characters are just so much they just crazy you know they just do yeah. a lot of stuff way better they than Ryu. They just His, he has crazy damage his damage is insane oh yeah from any hit like any yeah anything hit. Like you going, you going somewhere, bro. Uh, my man Luke. Luke is for sure in the god tier. Uh, yeah, just put him up there. Bro. Yeah, yeah. He's crouching medium punch. That's a god tier <laughs> button, bro. Right, it does a lot. It does a lot for you. Pay your look. rent. Pay the mortgage. Turn on the <laughs> sink. Turn on the shower. Like it do a lot. That that crouching medium punch. It does a lot, bro. I'm telling you. And then it leads into so much damage every time. Why does my man get three special moves in I, one I, combo? I, I agree with that. Look, you know, we gonna talk about this, bro. You see this right here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the button. All right, uh, man. Jamie. Uh, Jamie is such a weird character. I want to say he beats here. I want to put him in B. I, I feel that way, too. When he gets two drinks, he's really good, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's just some characters. It's hard to get them two drinks on, especially Gile. since like, like, like Gao, Chun Li, Ryu, Ryu, Luke. Like you don't want to lose the Oki on them, but you have to give up the Oki if you want the drink. And especially on like Gao, you some you really just don't want to give up Oki on Gao. So a lot of time when you fighting Gao, you really fighting him with no drinks because if you try to drink, you might not get back in with that drink. <laughs> So, <laughs> so you really got to count your blessings if you want to get the drink and probably not get back in and even be able to use it for the rest of the match. Or you got to take the Oki, do no damage for the whole match, and you got to try to win it with, yep. with eight, nine hits. Eight, eight combos and seven grabs. That's what you got to do in level zero with Jamie. So. I was fighting Justice Monterey, bro. It had to be the worst thing experience I ever had to deal with, bro.
that's a fireball that doesn't have requires no input honestly i think like the cami mirror if you playing a cami on modern you at an advantage like you just kind of shut me down jumping completely <laughs> and you can jump and do dive kick very easily like you there's no way to mess up cami jump dive kick in modern you just jump and hit the button there's no input so there's no way you could ever mess it up and then you just kind of shut the jumping down to the other cami and classic if they're playing classic so i feel like matching like that it gets kind of hard for the other character all right chumley <laughs> i want to say she's god tier honestly in this game you know I, you had me concerned because i remember when the game first came out you was like man chumley boo 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 yeah, locked down I, butt cheek bro it, it's because she don't have a throw loose and i played her in a beta like it just felt underwhelming but like I always say even in a beta that Chun had the most potential in the entire game to be the best character. But I just couldn't see it with myself because I don't I'm not a lab monster and stuff. I can only play and steal stuff from people. And characters like Chun is really can't I can't play unless someone gave me the formula. Now I could probably play Chun Lee because I, I see all the stuff that everyone else do. But back then no way. But yeah, this character is she's just really good. Uh her neutral is just Chun Li. Like every game, she just has such brain dead neutral over the entire cast. Bro, her stand speed, jab, bro, yeah, her walk speed, speed with her stand <laughs> jab <laughs> her is stand, crazy. Bro, I feel like the way her walk speed that stand jab in this game, in my eyes, is plus a block. Yeah, it might as well be uh, pretty <laughs> crazy. Her safe jump, I think, is really what makes her really as good as she is like that safe jump that people found was it's daily bro it's one of the cheapest <laughs> things in the street fighter game that you would have to deal with honestly <laughs> all right man dial bro gal i used to say is god tier but lately i don't really feel that way i want to say gal is a tier his fireball drive rush is just of course it's the best in the game it's insane character is just easy mode <laughs> it does everything for you especially in this game they made it extremely easy to even auto correct for you used to be kind of hard to do that in other street fighter games with flash kick but in really? this one just hold down Tell up it. kick and it will even auto correct <laughs> down for you and then you know gal is just all it is is sonic boom flash kick just that in this game sonic boom you can just start free pressure after <laughs> it every time you do it you can just do drive rush up yeah, overhead uh, low forward grab shimmy Whatever you want to do. Uh, all right, yeah, we're going to go with Kimberly. Kimberly, um, I say B tier. I'd put uh -huh. her in B. Um, I think she's pretty good, honestly. She just has some trouble fighting some of the top tiers because she gets oppressed. Her level one, I think, is the it's biggest awesome change. Yeah, yeah, that she would need. If they just sped up her level one a bit, you don't even have to make the EX Tatu invincible, in my opinion. Just speed up the level one a little bit, and I think Kimberly players would be happy. She already got some of the best offense in the entire game um when she does level three her walk speed becomes literally like yeah. jesus walking on the water yeah, so yeah. like you just start <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just start sliding across water when you get to level three so her walk speed becomes insane and on top of that her stand medium kick is just broken it's well, very hard okay. to punish yeah it, it's just it's a button of the year you know it, it, it's okay. one of those buttons you know you nominate that <laughs> at the award show at like it's one of those buttons <laughs> <laughs> but she actually has like a mix up when she throw the can she can throw you and combo the can she can <laughs> yeah. overhead you combo the can, can low, low combo, you, combo the can, can shimmy you combo shimmy the can, can. <laughs> yeah. try to jump out hit you hit the can, yeah. combo back, you hit the can. <laughs> all right jury jury is i'd say a tier you get her to a tier um Fireball Drive Rush is also just, that's pretty much jury, but on top of that, <laughs> it's really her EX Fireball that really starts the party for her. They throw EX Fireball, and then they just sit there and they do three free stores that you can't do anything about. Yeah, uh, uh, or they just Drive Rush behind it and they make you guess with the overhead or low, but most times they just store the three, and now she has three Fireballs, or she has the other moves that she could throw out and make safe with the Fireball. So her game plan really relies on just getting those stores and then just making the player. You just very really start feeling uncomfortable and neutral when Jury gets stores because you don't want to really deal with her fireball slowly stalking you across the screen while she just walking behind it, waiting to do some something, some nonsense. I don't know what they they plotting on and 
nowadays jury players even got setups where they just put the fireball there and they dash behind it and just throw you while it's right next to your foot and you don't even know that she could throw you right there she'll just throw you and it's like bro come on you snuck that in uh all right kid masters bro yeah, well you know that guy going yeah. to die here right? yeah I'll put that in front of him <laughs> put that just right there. Has, they just gave this character mad mad nonsense like I don't know where Ken learned these new moves. Like he's homeless, so like you yeah, telling but, me he found another homeless man that taught him these two crazy moves? Like, <laughs> come on, bro, ain't no way. Ken, like Dragon Lash and Genrai Kick, those moves just take this character to another level. I feel like if he didn't have them, he would still be good. But maybe like around where Ryu is. But when you add those two moves into the game. It just makes fighting Ken so hard on top of his drive rush jab has to be one of the fastest things in the world. Like BJ drive rush jab is fast, but I honestly think Ken is is actually a lot faster. You can't see it. Like you think you can, but nah, you can't see it, bruh. I promise and he's you. Slide, and he's sliding towards you while mm. while the jab is covered out. Any combo that can hit you with, it takes you all the way to the corner. It don't matter if he in the corner. It don't matter if Kim was in Africa, you in Antarctica. It don't really matter, bro. If you get hit by Ken, you go into that corner. And then he going to start throw looping you. Yo, all right, we got Blanca. <sighs> Blanca is such a weird character. I want to put him in God tier, but I want to put him A. Because uh, I feel like his level 2 just really Make propels some him as a character like if you get hit one time by the activation of it if he make you when you block that activation <laughs> if you get hit with that mix-up the round literally just <laughs> ends like no one survives blanca after getting hit by the first activation one of the, the level two so it's like i don't know if he's a tier or god tier because of that you might have to pick this one kizzy I, I don't all know. right I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you bro so <laughs> if you want if you want to ask me because my man uh mena has been uh uh attacking my community members uh i'm gonna go ahead and attack him i'm gonna put him up here with this guy so when he goes level two when he goes burr, 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 right all that me shit, angry. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah all that shit, right when he popped that shit, he can cross you up. The worst part too, you'd be thinking like, all right, he got pop level two. I'm gonna try to like, I'm gonna try to like uh, parry after the Blanca ball. They whiff it, walk up, throw yep, you. So, throw. so you already in trouble, right? So we got Rashid and Aki. So you said Aki is trash. We, yeah, Aki um, is, is trash, bottom. Trash. Yeah. What, 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 name, name her two things of why she's so bad. Uh, she's supposed to be a zoner. She has the worst zoning in the entire game. <laughs> True and she also was supposed to like she's supposed to poison you and stuff but like you can't really get the poison on if you don't get the hit like and her neutral is also the worst in the game like her buttons have no range her cower crouch is nothing like fangs like everything is just it's just bad yeah i can see that and what about rasheed rasheed uh for sure a tier um just his level two alone puts him in a tier his level two is broken and he honestly is like dj they play the game at a different speed rasheed don't really play regular neutral he don't really play with his buttons because there's buttons aren't really that good but when you pair it with his drive rush his like you know all the like different flips and stuff that he has in this game that gets him around the screen it becomes very hard to pin rasheed down in this game and his Damage is insane in this game compared to what he was in five. He does a lot of damage in this game, and he has a lot of plus frame. I think he's the only character with two plus buttons in this game. How do you feel about Street Fighter Six in a high level right now? Right now, honestly, I don't think it's the best place. Uh, it's the first version of the game, which is, I would say, it's definitely mm -hmm. a good first version. But just because it's a good version the first version of all fighting games that's literally always been trash it doesn't really say too much the game right now it just it just feel like you're playing a lot of different mini games when you're playing it like the things that you can do out of drive rush sometimes it doesn't really make a lot of sense like i feel like i should be able to just check drive rush and that's the end of it like a dash but nah there's other things you have to worry about when your opponent is doing a drive rush 
uh, the drive impact, which is just another mechanic that just adds on and it kind of slow, like make you play Street Fighter in a different way than we've been playing it for so many years. Like a lot of characters have been doing like, you know, button into special moves for years and years and years. Now you kind of can't do things like that anymore because you run the risk of getting drive impacted. So you have to, you know, do it very sparingly. And then the big one, I think, in my opinion, is just Perfect Parry. I think Perfect Parry is the silliest mechanic that the game could have added. Like, it makes every character just extremely scary. And especially mm -hmm. when you have your opponent cornered. Like, when I have someone cornered is the time I'm the most scared in the game. Like, when I knock you down and I have you cornered <laughs> on that knockdown... I'm so scared of what you might do on wake up and it's all because of perfect yeah. parry. You perfect parry me, now you back through me and I'm literally in the same situation that I had you in, but I got you there probably because I went neutral or something, but you just got me there because you pressed two buttons and got a perfect parry on accident. So that's like my biggest problem is the fact that you can win off an accident no one is trying to get perfect parry i mean you want it but like it's never a guarantee so like you're just hitting it hoping like oh yeah i hope i could catch his perfect button timing so i can just get this perfect parry back though and then maybe win the match and there's just like not a big risk to doing perfect parry especially from some ranges there's people now who just tap perfect parry in neutral and they just like, oh, well, if he hits a button right now, I'll get a perfect parry and a combo that's going to take him probably to the corner. People just tap it where they like, oh, he might press his best neutral button and I'm a perfect parry him. And I feel like that's just corny. My question is to you, if there's a way mm -hmm. you could balance perfect parry, what would that be? Either you make it only work on special moves, which seems like what it was really intended for because there's just some brain dead special moves on the game that depletes drive gauge. And if you don't have that, you'll kind of just be messed up. you just be pretty much. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, Jamie, so, Jamie would be dead, bro. Or you either make it have more whiff recovery so I can punish counter it. It'll stop people from just pressing it and, you know, just being like, okay, maybe I could win off of just hitting this if they somehow press this button. And I think that there probably should be two different parries, a low parry and a high parry. I think it's crazy that I it just parries that. everything. I agree with that. No matter if it's a low or a mid high, it just parries everything. So it eliminates that mind game. Like a lot of time people doing like drive rush overhead to, you know, as a mix up, people just do parry now and there's no mix up there. Yeah. They, they blocking the low and is blocking the overhead. So you don't even have to take have that mental stress of yeah. reacting to the overhead or low. Yep. You just react with simple button. You know when um when I when I play DJ, what sometimes what I do, you know, I apologize in advance. But sometimes <laughs> what I do is like I know that they're trying to like uh get out of the corner, you know, they try to dry rush and I parry and then they try to jump. I will let go parry and then up kick. Because <laughs> I'm already holding down back. So <laughs> it's dry rush, how would you bounce? The mechanic itself is not really that bad, but I think that should be punish counter because I think like you're not really risking much meter for doing drive rush, roll, drive rush, and neutral. You just kind of do it, and some characters' drive rush is just so good that even if you're ready to check it, you really might not be ready to check it. You just get counter hit. You just get counter hit and you die because you get so much plus frames from drive rush counter hits that you get combos that just don't even make sense <laughs> half the time <laughs> so i think like at least having them be punished counterable so you know they like okay if they check me here i'm losing a lot of drive gauge at least you know so you just feel like you get rewarded for checking them and slowing them down whereas if they hit you they get the hit and they start building drive gauge back with that hit so they building that whole bar back before the combo's over anyway uh now for me i think the weakest mechanic uh is drive reversal uh just because of how mm. it works against a lot of the moves like how do you feel about drive reversal uh drive reversal i do think it should get buffed just a small buff it should just be a little faster on startup like i think if people want to spam low forward drive rush like if you want it to be plus and all this on blocks and you just let people force their way into getting free mix-ups if i do drive reversal it should be a punish if i react accordingly to them turning green i shouldn't have to guess 
off a low forward drive rush if I have to, if I could drive reverse it on because if I don't react in time, they could just do jab block, which people doing anyway from drive rush off a low forward. You're just doing jab and block anyway. It's just like, why can't I stop them from doing that ever? So I think just speeding up the drive reversal a bit more, especially with how easy it is to punish and the reward you get for punishing it. I feel like just speed it up a little bit more and probably just take the plus frames out of it. Um, yeah, I think every character is plus one after dash air drive reversal. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe just take the plus frames out of it and then do that and it'll be fine, I think. Do you feel like backdash is good? Do you think, did you like like a buff in backdash? Uh, what's mm. your take on it? Uh, well, backdash is kind of similar to Street Fighter V. So for me, I'm just used to them being how they are. Mm -hmm. Especially coming from Street Fighter 4 where they were just extremely broken. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like as a Street Fighter player, after playing 4, like you don't really care about backdashes. You know, I feel like people who play other games, you know, they would care about the backdash more. But I think as a Street Fighter player, after we played 4, we've been we've been happy with how backdashes <laughs> work. <laughs> <laughs> so... I don't know if there's really ever been another fighting game that's had an actual invincible backdash just like Ford did. So oh, Blazable, Blazable has some uh, some experience and guilty gear. You know, oh, you know, so you, player, you understand player, what it's player, like. Player whole gameplay is like I'm an invul backdash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you understand what it's like to fight characters. Just, they just mash and backdash exactly. all day, and you got an option select. But some characters backdash was so good. good and for that even when you option selected they blocked it you had to just hard re you had to empty jump to yeah you just had to do the the super or the ultra <laughs> no options like just straight on wake on near wake up like yeah i know he's coming you look like a genius when it worked but when it don't work you look like the dumbest mom that ever touched the game bro you got people wondering if you had input errors and you know damn well you ain't input error that but the best part you can lie about it man i kinda i kinda <laughs> I think uh, for this guy, I think Backdash is is actually a better than Street Fighter Five because you actually can punish throws with Backdashes in the corner, mm. which I think is very good against throw loop pressure, which you didn't really have in Street Fighter Five. So that's one thing I do think is good about throws. But yeah, I think throws is for the most part just pretty much is five. So I don't really even think about throws when I think about like stuff that should be buffed or nerfed. Yeah. Or back, I mean, back dashes. Yeah. I don't yeah. think about back dashes. Yeah, well, well, actually, there's one more thing I, I wanted to, uh, that I forgot about. Throws. How do you feel about throws? Oh, well, they just need to go. Like, throws sure. make sure. every mid player a top player. Sure. Like, <laughs> uh, it's sad. I don't want to say that, but, you know, yeah, I'm not a person that's. Bad. Yeah, you know, I'm not a person that's going to hold my tongue, but, like, if you are an okay player and you throw someone, you turn into the best player in the world. <laughs> that's just how that works like maybe you might be wrong a lot of times but like in that split second you become the best player in the world until the decision is made by the defensive person if they getting out or not you you turn into the best player so Bro. stuff like that they have to take out because it just ruins i feel like a skill gap in the game that i feel like every competitive game should have no i can't unsee it but i can just see like some average player you know they just Throw, they just throw you like four times and you can just see their face just like changing into like Fujimura. <laughs> <laughs> like slowly but surely as they keep throwing the opponent, they just become like these cool, these red pop players that are really good. Well, Street Fighter V, I think did it best. Like you were still in range to do, you know, your pressure, but it's just that in this game, they have perfect parry. So like if you do a perfect needy, then you just might get perfect parry. But I think that that's a that's not too bad of a mind game to play. At least you know you can still grab them again. Mm -hmm. But I think just putting them at a range where you can't throw again, or maybe you can if you do drive rush, then you could get a th another throw. But I feel like just having throw loops in the game, it, it's just not. It just creates a a sense of you. You just feel like scared all the time like you just never comfortable especially some care got mid-screen throw loops like ken can be <laughs> mid-screen throw looping people so like bro i was i can't feel comfortable nowhere against that character come on bro <laughs> after all that the we have uh you have anything else you want to add on um is there anything else i hate in this game <laughs>
I mean the input system, I bro. Mean, I want to get my DPS, bro. Yeah, I want to get. I want to get a lot of things. I want to get my parry. Capcom, listen, y'all, listen. I've been anti airing with DPS for fourteen years, bro. <laughs> Not one Street Fighter game have I ever had trouble in putting a DP, bro. Never. Fourteen years I've been playing DP characters. Fourteen years I've been getting my DP, but on the fifteenth year, they just disappeared. <laughs> no, my fifteen. Good team in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> in the 15th year, I just get, when I try to DP, I get drill or Hadouken. Why wasn't I getting that for 14 years before that, bro? It's not, it can't be me. I don't want to believe it's me. So, like, they got to they gotta do something with them inputs, bro. I don't know where they going. I don't know what sewer line they going down when I do my DP, but they need to get them out of there, bro, and give me my inputs, please. There you have it, man. <laughs> uh, one thing I want to say before we head out, where can they follow you, bro? Punk the God on everything. DA is not T H E. And yeah, that's you find me everywhere. Yep, put that on DA, baby. All right. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> and we see you guys in the next episode of Fighting Game Select next time.